Hello, this is Riley the DM, and welcome back to Tavern Tales. Today I am joined by Crusale. Who are you playing today, Crusale? Hey, everybody. Thank you, Riley. It's been a while, but yeah, we are... Today uh, I am playing as Takra Ethkamorali, the druid... Or the, uh, the Goliath druid, and Kana Nilva, the Air Genasi assassin. And along with Crusale today, there's also me. Not me the DM, but me the player. Who are you playing today, me? I think I'm playing Cyprus. Am I playing Cyprus? That is correct. Yes. I'm playing Cyprus. <laughs> Cyprus Jokal, the monk of the open fisted way. And last time we last time we played was a while ago, but as a refresher, we discovered y'all discovered the giant Naga creature in that black tower made out of some sort of disturbing material that absorbed dead bodies and turned them into material. And you freed some freed some people from these cocoons. You got some nice spider, nice like moth silk super super rope stuff that Cypress used to make a sling for her super poison gem. And now we have to figure out what's going. What are we going to do with that Naga that doesn't seem to be dying all the way? Yeah, like it's dead and it's not moving, but it's not burning to ash like it like a thing should when you set it on fire. Also, Kano took some of that face open in the hope that she could build a stronger bow. Mm-hmm. So we've got a... So today we're going to be continuing from there. We're going to be figuring out what are you guys going to do with that Naga? What are you going to do with... Do you know if all the, all the snake people have gotten... have been taken out? Do you know if any are in the area? And... Got to try and find somebody to do something with that string. Yeah. So... Well, I'm guessing the local ranger will have some ideas. And I'm forgetting his name now. The the brother... That would be Jarrell. Jarrell, yeah. Jarrell Rockfist, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, oh, also, one other thing. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, we couldn't get... Uh, Wayne was not available for this session, but, we are, but we're all thinking of him, hoping that we will get to see him for the next one. But, yeah, Wayne, Wayne's character, Wayne the Kenku Monk, is also with us today as, a, as an NPC. Oh, yeah. Is he a Kenku, or is he an Aarakocra? He's, He's a Kenku. He's a uh, Kenku sailor. We'll just have to imagine he's either singing singing sailor shanties or mm-hmm. imitating what everyone's saying. Beautiful times will be had. So, uh, he's a sailor. What was that? He's a sailor. Yeah. Yep. Chose that as his background because it uh, it seemed like fun. And so far it has been. Always a good reason. So, um... That is true. So we're gonna be... So you guys are... In the tower, watching... Watching that stuff burn. Not all the way. Khan is there. Tukra and Cypress have just come back down. You guys spooled up all that stuff. And freed anybody who was still... Yeah, you opened up... Opened up the cocoons. You've got these emaciated pale, pallid people. What are you what are you guys gonna do? Well, okay, um I guess first off, Connor will alert everybody to come over and see this to it and upon saying Tucker will say, Well that's not natural. Tucker is absolutely correct. I'd say kill it with fire, but that doesn't seem to be working. Connor's gonna look up at Tucker singing he just made a joke. I've never heard Tucker make a joke before. This is kind of refreshing. All right. So, so that is my that is my immediate take on the situation with my characters. <laughs> what does Cypress think, me? Cypress uh, proposes that we uh, well, if you can't kill it, then put it in a situation where it can't where. Uh, where it can't escape and it's as good as dead. Hmm. Tukra will nod along with Cypress on that. He'll say, yes, we need to make sure that it can't regenerate its body. We've got it as a head. It can't do much in that state. Uh, as long as we bind it down, because the last head that we uh, that we left for, one, for something of this nature kind of ended up rolling away. So if we can keep it from regenerating and we can keep it from rolling, I think that we can at least get this back to town safely and hopefully start finding a way to get rid of it from there. I'm, I'm guessing the Lady Green may be able to give us some insight. 
Hmm. Well, there we go. We have the plan. All right. All right. Um, so I think Tukra will will take part of the spool, the part that wasn't wasn't reserved for uh, for Cypress or Kana, and he'll start binding up the the Naga head really tight. Okay. Because it can't really regenerate if it can't if it can't grow outward. If it's bound up so tightly that it actually can't expand out, he will just try and bind it so that it actually can't regenerate that part of itself. Okay. Uh, you don't have quite. You don't have enough. It's like a really big head to fully encase it. But you can get a good solid like six inch six inch strand all the way around it. Yeah. So you you tie that up. It's. After dowsing the fire, I assume that's on it. Yeah, it's too. still kind of smoking and cooked, and char and ash is falling off the outside. Uh, it doesn't seem to be regenerating necessarily yet, but it's certainly it's uh, something to keep an eye on. Right. You guys can transport that. Would you like to take anything? Anything else, or just head out now? Um. Well, we got to see if we can get everybody away, because even if they are emaciated, it's going to be tough to carry everybody back, so we got to see if we can get everybody up and give them enough energy to move forward. Tukra, if if they start to wake up, I think... Dang it, I got rid of Goodberry for the day. It was supposed to be a combat... It was a combat-heavy day. Mm-hmm. Um, That's like the perfect time for Goodberry. What yep. are you doing? I don't know. Um, we, could take a, we could take a long rest, but I don't want to give it that long to to start waking up itself because also we know it can cast spells so mm-hmm. that's another reason to bind it is that it can't if it can't open its mouth it can't do any vocational parts of a of a spell true um along with that oh we forgot to mention uh we, you, do we still have people uh do we still have people who are relatively okay they're all alive right all the 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 victims yes they're all they're all alive they're all unconscious. Yeah. And look in poor shape. Yeah. Oh, and, uh, but yeah, I was going to say, you, uh, you stated, we actually, I don't think we... Oh, yeah, I don't think I mentioned. We've leveled up. Woo! So we're level, we're all level five now. We are now so, renowned within our own local area. People are going to know the names. It take a whole lot, because, I mean, it's pretty much either Baron, Tychrondius, or nobody. True. Pretty much. All right. Um, um, so yeah, I guess Tucker would would advocate for uh, making sure that we we gotta I don't know use something something like smelling salts or do something to try and get these people. Away. So you guys could make a medicine check to try and okay. rouse revive these people. I'm actually proficient in medicine. Oh, right. speaking of which, I need to upgrade those. Um, so, so go ahead and roll at, that for me. Tukra is at a plus seven for medicine. I'm not using the orange die for this one. Screw you, orange die. But it would be so much more interesting if then Tucker kills everyone. That is a an eleven in total. Oh my god. You have a plus seven. Yeah. How did how did you get so close? I don't know. So um there's no pressure, there's nothing going on. Tucker is able to Tucker is able to sort of rouse and gently wake up these people. He's a little more he's a little more rough than he usually would be because he's a kind of tired, exhausted. He's stressed, stress is stressed out part. from the from the fight, worried about this snakehead, so he's constantly looking over his shoulder, accidentally like pouring a bunch of salt on a guy's no on like their nose, almost making him sneeze and wake up. But you managed to sort of get everyone up. They're all kind of woozy and in a bit of in a bad shape but they can walk they need someone to help sort of support them but you guys can all sort of hobble around together they're the one the the one that is there's one older man who he seems the most tired but he's so thankful so happy he's incredibly appreciative to be alive and well and saved Mm. he tells you that he saw he saw some of the others get taken away as he was being wrapped up, and he can't imagine a fate worse than that. So he's he's just so purely joy overjoyed to be alive. Do I does Kana or do Kana or Tucker I recognize this guy? Uh, you've seen it. You've seen his face before in town, but you don't know him by you don't know him by name. I I ask because I wonder if that is that the same farmer who Kale met with when he came into town for the first time to check out the Twisted Tower? Uh, 
No, that's not the same. Okay. This is just another guy. Another guy. It's like it's like the cabbage farmer from Avatar. He's always there, you just don't know his name. Yeah, yeah, exactly. He's been there at each of the big events. He's just been kind of in the background of the crowd. Yes. Uh, so you guys escort, escort them back. It's slow going. It takes some extra time because... You've got, these wound, you've got these wounded people who can't really move that fast. Right. Do we think that they could uh, regenerate before we uh, head out? Um, or like, cause my, one of my thoughts is if we take the, a long rest, um, or some of us take a long rest, and some of us take A, let's stab the snake over and over. That could work. Uh, that could work if you want to sleep the night in this creepy tower that eats dead people. You you certainly can't you certainly could do that. Are you guys gonna take a long take a long rest, let the survivors kind of vivify and try and regain some vim and vigor? Yeah, you know what? Because Tucker technically won't have gained his third his third level spells yet, I think taking a long rest to do that sort of and as well allow him to actually put good berry on himself. So we can actually feed these people before we get on the road. That's probably of, of some benefit. All right. Um, and we're going to have uh, people constantly on rotation for stabbing duty, where they just continually stab the head over and over again. Okay, so somebody's yes. going to be always stabbing the head. Or just making or sure doing that something to kill it. Two people stabbing the head. Any, any time it looks like it's regenerating, we want to make sure that it nope, stays... No, just stabbing the head. Okay. That works too. Okay. Um, you won't be able to get a. You guys won't be able to get a long rest if somebody is always stabbing the head. Well, because that's that's looks like, stabbing looks like is pretty this, vigorous this sounds activity. Sounds more interesting than sleeping at the moment. I'd say something. So Cypress is up for so it. Okay. Is okay. Okay, but right. hold on. If a long. So you're saying that a that just sticking a knife in the head is considered a laborious thing that wouldn't go towards a long rest. Well, stabbing it well, once is not, not sleeping. but stabbing it over and over and over. Have you ever just do just doing like this for it for an hour That's would be true. tough. Hold, yeah, holding up a holding a, a book holding, holding a, a dagger pound, for yeah. an hour would be really would be rough. Did you ever see the old uh, Punisher film? Ah, uh, with with, uh, with John Travolta as the as the villain. In yeah, the, yeah. Remember what he said about yeah, you're you're a fit guy, but I'm betting holding up this. But I'm betting that holding up this uh, grenade, you haven't, you've been neglecting your plyometrics. Holding up this grenade for more than five minutes is going to be like torture. And then the grenade falls. Yeah. Uh, so classic. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. That was that. That was actually a very interesting. It was sort of like Jason Bourne before Jason Bourne. Mm -hmm. A little bit. Hmm. So. So plus we can always get like the people who have regained consciousness to stab. Yeah. That's and if true. any of them feel like they're drifting, we'll tell them to wake someone else to swap out. Uh, you're gonna have a hard time waking these people who just who just got woken up from being unconscious to wake up. Uh, you could, Kana or Cypress could take a short rest, and everyone else could take a long rest if Cypress wants to just stay up and do the do the torture of the head. <laughs> Or you yes, guys could Cypher, take Cypher turns. Is gonna do that okay. How is she? Right. I mean, she's not doing. Oh, well, she's doing fine. All right. All right. Um, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Tukra is going to uh, take the long rest, and he's going to take the time while he's resting. He's gonna he's gonna contemplate a little bit, having fought a creature of such of such. Uh, Ethereal magic. He's going to comp contemplate the uh, the con the concept of magic within his own realm of expertise, and he's going to come to some epiphanies about how to further his own ability and gain to to uh, or he'll gain access to the third tier. I'm I'm sort of putting words in your mouth, I guess, but that's how I think he taking a long rest after fighting such a magical creature maybe would be a good explanation for how he suddenly knows third level spells. Uh yeah. Well, actually, as Tukra is sleeping, he uh, he kind of has he has a dream, and he he opens his eyes. He's laying he's laying on the ground on his sleeping on his sleeping sack in a strange sort of 
more ghostly variation of of the uh, the copes that the tower was in. The tower is not there in this, and no one else is. He's alone in this small in this small copes of woods. The trees that the Naga knocked down are still standing tall, and Tucker recognizes this as the as the Feywild, similar to when he communed with the Feywild through the staff earlier when they first when they first recovered it. Uh, he can he can sense sort of the same feeling of things being off, and directly underneath him he feels this greater this incredible sense of something being wrong, something being backwards almost, and. The Naga head is there, but instead of being the head of the Naga, it's the head of a man. And it's bound and, ga- bound and gagged by that thread you put around it. It's clearly trying to communicate with you. It's sort of moving its jaw and sort of muffled, muffled, muffled yells and cries and words are coming out. It does not feel kind. Mm. Do you want to unbind the head? Okay, first off, I like your explanation much better than mine. I like this setup much better than mine. Um, secondly, I think Tukra would walk over to the head and it's saying unkind words. You don't know what it's saying. Well, it, it doesn't seem this, to be kind to you. But you have the sense of animosity, or yeah. he has the sense of animosity. Like, it's, it's a guy yelling at you. 100%. Tucker's going to pick up his boot and kick him in the nose. Oh. And then he's going to say, if you have nothing nice to say, say nothing. So you, your boot strikes your boot strikes the head right in the nose, and although you kicked with a good amount of force, it just sort of gently rolls and drifts slightly. It ends up being it ends up being perfectly upright on the cut of where the head would be. Well, that's creepy. And the eye, you start to see this sort of burning in the burning look in the eyes, as the. As you look directly at him, the head starts to get bigger and bigger and bigger, and you notice that the pupils are not shaped like a normal pupil. They're in the shape of a lantern, the same sort of the same shape of the lantern as that strange lantern you found in the sort of torture chamber underneath the green farms. The Will O' Wisp lantern. Mm-hmm. Sorry, that's my name for it. Uh, it. It feels like a Will O' Wisp, you know, where it's supposed to be a gu- it guides people in and then traps them. Yeah. So uh, it gets larger and larger until, until it's kind of Basically big enough, lantern. big enough to cover your whole field of view. It starts pushing the trees out of the way, and Tucker feels small little grasping tendrils coming out of the, coming out of the, uh, this fey staff that he has. Huh. They start to grip around him and grab him and wrap him up, and then you wake up. You feel newly more powerful and very concerned. As you look the as you look at the Naga head, you notice that one of the pupils is in the shape of the Fae Seeker Lantern. The huh. other is norm is normal snake shaped. Okay. So Tucker left the Fae Seeker Lantern at home for now. I th- no, no, they brought along anything that would give them a chance to fight against a Fae. So I guess he would pull it out. Well, first off, he would, uh, so everybody knows, he's also changed up his spells. Tucker currently has Cure Wound, Speak with Animals, uh, Good Berry, and Ice Knife as his, his uh, as the four spells he's prepped in the first uh, level. He's got Moonbeam, Animal Messenger, and Hold Person as his spell slots into the, as his prepared spells in the, the second level. And in third level, he's got Contra Animals and Speak with Plants prepped. All right. Um, Cypress has Fist prepped. Awesome. Um, so Bef- before we keep going here, the night was pretty uneventful. You, uh, for Cypress, she did not notice anything strange happening to the Naga head. Tupra had a particularly strangely fitful night of sleeping, mm. but other than a few stray moans and groans, it was just a nice, pleasant night. The weather was cool. The stars were the stars were shining in the sky, and. Cypress really enjoyed her time 
punching, kicking, poking, prodding the Naga head. As you were looking at it, you noticed both of the pupils were both of the pupils were standard snake pupils the whole time while you were there. They changed as soon as Tukra woke up. And then Tukra pulls out this lantern and you recognize it. You've seen cypresses from the from the country of Far Eldrith, which is a small little secluded country, secluded sort of country, trapped, put in this little forested, mountain-ringed area nearby. And Cyprus has seen these a bunch. They're a tool used by one of the chivalrous orders there, called the Order of the Lantern. And you haven't seen somebody outside of Far Eldrith ever have one of these. Huh, weird. What's weird? Uh, that lantern. Uh, it's typically found in Far far Eldrith. Really? This was used by the, uh, by, well, this fellow here you've been stabbing. He used it to, to capture and slaughter Fae. Cypress knows this lantern as being used by the Order of Knights in Far Eldrith to dispose of monsters and evil creatures. It's never, it hasn't been used for fey creatures, which are innocent in your mind. I, I make note of that, and I say that. Hmm. And Tucker's gonna come up, he's gonna come up close, but he's not gonna let the face of your lantern touch this thing, because he gets the sense that that might be a bad idea. But he's just gonna come up and look the creature in the eye and just say, your perversions never cease, do they? Which eye do you look in? The face seeker one. All right. Uh, the head remains responseless. It's been beaten to submission. He wasn't expecting it to respond. He's just feeling like like just berating it because this thing's been a thorn in his and his family's side for a while now, and also mm-hmm. it goes against every every tenet of his druidic order. It's just yeah. a complete I'm abomination. I've been having such a good time. Have you been at that all night? Maybe. You are a very driven young woman. So with Cypress's... I just had luck. Hmm? With a... Uh, right, how, does... how does what look? The head. The head, considering I've been beating it all night. It looks in better shape than it was last night. Well, that's not good. It's not burnt and ashy anymore. Most of the scales have returned. The hood is kind of filling out a little bit. It's not, like, the the cobra sort of hood is not fully expanded, fully grown back. It's maybe a quarter of the way there, but it's it's definitely plumping out from the sides. Okay. Um, is Kanu awake at this point? Yes. If Kana's there and she sees this, she might quickly go back down to the uh, to the basement level or to mm-hmm. the lower chamber and see what happened to the rest of the body, if it actually properly burned or if there's signs of reanimation. All of the all of the fires that are still burning, most of them are still burning. Or actually, sorry, I don't remember. Did you guys we collect it in one fire, or did you collect it, or did you leave it in? We did several fire fires. Fire. One big fire. Yeah. Okay, uh, in that case, a lot of the Uh-oh. a lot of the separate pieces have sort of moved and shifted and are aligning to and are aligning and slowly sort of sealing back together to make the body. Okay, if Kana sees that, she's gonna pull out her fate, her uh, cold iron dagger, and she's gonna mm-hmm. work to sever them again. It's not it's not hard to sever them again. They're it's kind of like a, you know how when you're gl- when you're like gluing something together, and mm-hmm. you just apply the glue, you can still pull it apart real easy. Mm-hmm. It's like that. They're all touching, and they're you can see fibers trying to hold it together, but just the slightest push and move, they un they unstick. Okay. Um, how heavy are each of these pieces? Depends on if you want to cut them smaller or larger. The, I'm, I'm gonna wondering... say you cut them into probably ten pound chunks. Like one one vertebrae per piece or something. Okay. 
Um, if it's that light, I think Kana might, while the rest of the party's game prep, Tucker's going to cast Goodberry and hand them out to everybody to give them some nourishment for the day. Okay. But while he's doing that... a little bit of extra health. Yeah. Perfect. But Tucker's also going to, or, sorry, Tucker's going to hand Kana her berry, and while, when she, while she eats it, she's actually going to take each 10 pound piece and she's going to take it out of the, uh, of the chamber and bury them as far apart from each other as she can. She's actually going to try and bury them in, in the uh, in the dirt. Okay. Uh, that will take a good little while. Make a make an athletics check to see how long it takes to dig up some holes. For Kana? Mm-hmm. Well, athletics is at a minus one. You can one. do it at advantage, because I'm going to assume people are going to help you. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Well, I'll take the 14. All right. Uh, so... You can dig some decently deep, some decently deep holes, call them, you can do it for, it would take about half a day to dig enough holes that are two feet deep, or you could take a full day and dig enough holes that are three, three or four feet deep, or you could dig one big hole. Not doing that again. I think that she... That having relayed her discovery to everybody, I think she would emphasize that it's important that we make sure that these pieces can't combine easily. Mm-hmm. So if everybody's in agreement with her, then she would recommend that they take an extra day just to make sure that these pieces are properly disposed of. Okay. So you dig some, you dig some four feet, four foot deep holes, bury them at the bottom, cover them all back up. It's the it's the end of the day. And yeah, that's that that works. That happens. They're all dug, they're all dug deep in the ground. You kind of scatter them far throughout the far throughout the copes. None of them are closer than maybe ten feet from the next hole. Okay. Uh, are you gonna mark these holes at all? Um, if are you think, planning to come back here? If we need to, yes. I think that Kana would leave some kind of thieves markings. So that only she knows the location. She might leave them on, okay. on the trees nearby. Just easy ways to, de- to detect it. But that if any cultists come and try and collect this thing, like we, she knows that it has minions. And they don't know if they got rid of them all. So if she can leave markers that the minions won't find so easily, but she can, it will help her find the pieces again, then yeah, I think that she would do that. Okay. Um, if you were to mark each hole that would probably be pretty obvious because there would be a there would be things next to all sorts of like 30 different spots in this area no what she would do or do you want to just mark the copes she'd mark the copes but the thing is that she would in these can't she would she would scatter the message around on different trees but nothing that's an obvious pattern Mm -hmm. and keep them you know slightly hidden but yeah she would find she would use she would write the thieves can't, and she would write it on like maybe two trees, just a, a separate a message that when combined together makes sense, but otherwise separate just looks like a bunch of gobbledygook. Looks like kids having fun, you know, carving their names into trees. Okay. Uh. And as much as she doesn't like the idea of letting this thing get inside Tucker's head further, because I think Tucker would also relay his dream. Um, I think she they would all agree. Well, Tucker, I think Tucker might actually want to try and push to get back sooner because of his experience with it, but I think Connor would recommend so that the villagers don't get exhausted and keel over on the way back. She'd recommend that they take another evening to rest if it took them all day to make those holes. Okay. Still there. So you guys are going to, you guys are going to rest again? What do you, what do you think, me? During the day, I'm thinking that I'm going to do something with that head. Okay. Make sure that the head is still, you know, in bits and pieces. All right. Um, but generally, traveling at night seems to be a worse idea. Okay. So you guys are going to stay there again? Yeah. This time, Tucker's got enough energy that I think he would actually... No, nope, Tucker needs to sleep. Well, no, he would still sleep, but he would set up his, uh, he would use his, what's the name of that? Tiny hut? Yeah, his tiny hut, 
vest. Okay. Not the glimmer fairy vest. Uh, shoot, I don't have the card for it. What? Uh, nah, yeah, it's not in here. Huh, strange. Um, but yeah, he would he would use his uh, his vest his vest of of, uh, of safe harbor, I guess we'll call it. Mm, that's strange. Yeah, applying Kana as the uh, as the master of the household, he will create the the Liaman's tiny hut uh, effect. All right. So, how does Kana want her household to look? She wants to be reminiscent of her home back in uh, in Loria in Laurel. So, in her mind, she would recreate sort of this very very geometrically appe- uh, appealing two story. House. Oh yeah. There's like a sweeping. There's sweeping buttresses. There's gargoyles, but they're beautiful angels instead of ugly demons. Her house wasn't that fancy actually. Back after her mother got kicked out of her aristocratic house, so it, it'd be more. Yeah, still, it's still nice looking with a bit with sort of the nice colonnades and stuff like that, but nothing as fancy as uh, as animalistic adornments. Okay. So, uh, so you guys are in a tiny hut. It's a beautiful, it's a beautiful, simplistic house, almost improved by how sort of purely plain the style is, but still very well crafted. Think of a fusion between uh, Japanese simplicity and Arabian, you know, um, Arabian geometrics. Yeah, yeah, I like that. It's got like a nice dome on top that isn't actually accessible, but it appears there. Yeah. So you guys can. Safely rest inside there. Everyone can fit. Uh, when Kana I'm goes in... I'm taking the head with me. Hmm? What's up? I'm You're... taking the head with me. All right. Uh, are you going to stay up and mess with the head again, or are you going to let somebody else stay up and mess with the head? Um, I'm going to tell people that they always need to have at least two people up messing with the head. Okay. Kana might have a solution to that. She might. She. We could just stick her cold iron dagger into it. That might disrupt yeah, this but... regeneration. Do you guys want to do that, or do you want to have someone stay up and keep messing with it? Uh, on my proposal is we stick the cold iron dagger into it, and then we have two people messing with it as well, and we'll see if the cold iron, but not in the area with the cold iron dagger, and if we see if the cold iron dagger gets pushed out. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's the thing. I'd like to have somebody monitoring to make sure that. It, uh, one doesn't absorb the cold iron dagger, and two doesn't try and spit it back out. Yeah, yeah. But I think we still need to beat it, especially since I've been beating it all all of last night. It seems to have been it seems to have regenerated at least partially. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, that sounds like a good plan. Oh, and yeah, during the day we we did like fire and everything to try and burn it back okay, down. Okay. So you burned it back down during the day, as you were yeah. digging the holes and everything. Uh. Let's see, so there's the three survivors, y'all three, and Wayne. Yeah, you have enough people for to take rotations on that. So, you beat it up overnight. Let me see what happens with the cold iron. Uh, everyone who took a turn beating up the head overnight saw that... There was almost a steaming sort of searing effect from the cold iron the whole time, but it wasn't hot steam. It was more like mist coming off of a lake where it's a little warm, but you can tell it's because something very cold is touching something very warm. Sort of eldritch almost? Eldritch steam? Or more mystical? Straight up literal steams coming out. Um, Also, I see you've got... It's the steward's mantle. Sorry, I've forgotten the name of it. I was just looking up to make sure I remembered the things it does. Right. Got all those. Alright, nothing there. Uh, This time, so the whole time everyone saw that effect coming out, nothing was... The dagger did not seem to move. It didn't seem to, like, get pushed out as it regenerated or fall, sink further in as it plunged further in. But this time, when morning comes, you notice that the head is in worse shape than it was when it started the night. Really? So it's, it started out being kind of charred and gross. The flaps had entirely burned away from the cobra hood. 
now and like both the eyes had burned up had burned off into li- into liquid now the eyes have recovered but none of the scales have come back it's more withered it's more kind of skeletal at its sliced off base huh. sort of the meat has shriveled away and the cold iron dagger is barely held in there the meat around it seems to have shrunk back from it almost so that seemed to be a pretty good that along with people messing with it beating it up did a did a good job of restraining this thing seeing this kind of going to think okay i think we found a decent way to to mess with this thing she's going to she they also brought along the cold iron shackles mm-hmm. um i think that kind of would try and find some way to include that in the wrapping i i don't know how long the chain is well it's the it's the handles that are cold iron the chain is just oh a chain. okay so maybe not so useful in this case i mean you could it's another thing of cold iron you could like put it on it but but that I it's feel not like, gonna injure it necessarily yeah but i'm just wondering if being exposed to cold iron is what's causing it to necrotize so, you know, she'll leave that as it is. You know, okay. She'll take him out and just think, eh, that's not going to, that's not really going to, it doesn't have anything to bind to. So she'll instead just put them back into her bag or into her satchel and uh, say, all right, is everybody ready to go? And Tucker will, since he's had a chance to restore his spell slots, he will once again cast Goodberry to give everybody food for the day. Nice. Because one berry actually saves you for 24 hours, right? Mm-hmm. Man, Goodberry's awesome. Yeah, it's pretty sweet. I just realized that new the food part of the new travel system gets kind of beaten by that. But that's good. Sometimes you need to be able to have things that get yeah. beat. Well, no matter what, I think with the new travel system, Tucker would be the provisioner because he's also an outlander, so he's able to collect game in an area he knows pretty well. Um, yeah, so with that, Tucker, yeah, Tucker will pick up the, the head making sure to fasten the cold iron dagger in as strongly as he can. Um, or at least keep it in place while he's holding the head. Mm-hmm. And he's going to make sure that he's covering up the eyes, too. He doesn't want it having a chance to charm a person. Yeah, Seems like it's got something going on with okay. them eyes. Definitely, um, a good, definitely a good thing to watch for. Yeah. Um, but yeah, if... if everything's been addressed and there's been no disturbance in the dirt I think that Tucker would vote for uh, for them to make their way back to Forest Home okay uh, the dirt does not seem there seems to have been no disturbances nothing has changed like none of the none of the pieces have wiggled their way up out through the dirt or anything has there been I'm also wondering if maybe they would somehow be able to burrow underground so I think they'd be inspecting to see if actually there was any rising dirt around the original holes. No, the whole, the layout looks the same. It looks like there's the holes, the covered up stuff. I'm going to say you guys pile on like some some wood, some wood or firewood or bricks or stones you found to cover the actual spots for at, overnight Yeah. to kind of help pat down the dirt and flatten it. Yeah. Which of course you would remove before leaving. Exactly. So um, everything seems safe. Everything seems good. Do you guys want to head out? I Tucker would vote for it. Kana would concur. Uh, but obviously there are only two out of six people. How many survivors were there? Three. Three. So yeah, two out of six. So if the if the survivors aren't feeling healthy enough to travel, then they say let's take a let's take a little while to rest. Also, obviously Cypress gets a vote. So at this point they've been properly nourished for two days they've been able to sleep they got to do some light exercise overnight and during the last day they're feeling and, pretty good and they're, some catharsis. they're much recovered a little catharsis yeah. too beating up on the on their captor i the guess the guy who was overjoyed is kind of he's a little more he's a little more reserved he feels a little embarrassed about how psyched he was to be saved on the first day nah. the other two are feeling all right it's a it's a younger boy and an older woman. They seem to be related somehow. And they're, they stick together. They're all just... They're all ready to go back home. Right. Okay. Um, so, yeah, Tukra... By the way, what, what was the name of the boy that uh, Tukra offered to make his apprentice? Oh, God, what was his name? 
Lingle? No, not Lingle. Stappenstein is his last name or something like that. I'll, I'll look it up later. Yeah, well, if we have the last name, that's fine. Tuck, Tucker will uh, want to address something when we get back. Okay. Uh, okay, so, yeah. So you guys, you travel back. You guys can make pretty good time. It takes about half a day. You go directly back to town. Uh, as you get close, Jarrell and a few other people are waiting, and they're right they're right at right at the edge of town watching looking out for you everyone's clearly been super stressed waiting scared that you were not going to return and uh you come in crowd everyone's cheering the survivors run off to see that run off to their families they've all been waiting a good portion of the crowd is looking around and disappointed Mm. so after that first initial like cheer and outburst of happiness, there's a large sort of sullen silence that settles over and people slowly sort of disperse. Oh, I think, I wonder how they would react if they saw the Naga head that Tukra has under his arm. People, the, the people- I mean, at this point, yeah. we should probably reveal that uh, serpent head because the best way to uh, have a town stab a head together as if the entire town knows about the head. Yeah, yeah. I think, well, before everybody dispersed, I mean, obviously they can't ask everybody to stick around, but they would ask for certain people to come and join them, the village leaders, Lady Green. So the bro- the mm-hmm. Rockfist brothers and Lady Green, they'd ask to have joined them. And there was one other, the mayor, right? Uh, not the mayor, Old Man Jean. Old Man Jean. Old Man Jean was the one with the amulet, too. Yeah. They'd ask for Old Man Gene since he's sort of the head of the farming community. They asked for him to come too. Yeah, he's he's the man who knows how to do things. Yeah. Um, along with that, actually, Tucker would say um, he would ask the crowd um, if anybody's seen the Steppenstein boy. I'd like for him to come as well. I think tell him that uh, that Tucker is sending to him about that matter we discussed. Okay. Um, somebody in the crowd. Somebody in the crowd pipes up. I'm I'm their neighbor. I'll go I'll go see if they, I'll go see if he's here. Excellent. And Thank you. Charges off, young boy. He's he was one of the he was one of the ones who him and his, him and his mother were looking around for someone, but somebody didn't seem to have shown up. So this is clearly him doing something to distract himself. It's a good thing. Uh, but you call you kind of call this little. Meeting. Do you show off the snake head? Do you just say, like, can we? I we should have a meeting. There's something the town needs to know. Um, yes, I think that they would say they're not looking to try and be discreet about this because obviously everybody needs to understand what's going on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The uh, so Tucker's bringing along young Steppenstein because he believes it's time for him to start his training. It, even even just seeing a little bit of how druids work. What, what they need to be looking for, what, you know, maybe even a little bit of the magic, just starting to make him understand how druidic vocation works. Okay. Druidic incantations work. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, um, I think that he'd say, is, um, is there a meeting hall that we should go to, or can we just discuss this out in the open? What would you prefer? Because he, Tukra would not be fussed. Kana is not fussed either, because she believes that making sure that in, that everybody understands is one way to... Uh, it's important, especially since they're sort of on, forced home is on its own out in this frontier. So, the more everybody knows, the better off they are. It's not like they have a a, a nearby guard post they can go to to protect everybody. Uh, everybody needs to be able to defend for themselves. Everybody kind of Baron and Jorel kind of turn and look at Mistress Green and old and old Jean. Jean looks and he says to you, well, boy, that depends what this is about. His voice is a lot stronger and more kind of in control than it was last time you spoke with him. Yeah. He's not pretending to be a doddering old man anymore. Right. Um, so, Tucker would say, it's about making sure that what happened this past month doesn't happen again. Well, that seems like something everybody needs to know. Okay. Let's take this to the... Why don't we take this to the town field? 
Okay. We'll bring them all. We'll bring everyone around. And he call he calls out to everyone to the telling people like gather your family, gather your gather your loved ones. We're going to meet. We're going to meet with our saviors at the at the field of celebration. Ooh, all right. That's where they had the wedding. That's where all the good stuff happens right. in town. It's not. It's not exactly a tavern, but it seems like a good place to tell the tale. <laughs> okay, so we get over there, and I guess if everybody's gathered, and is is young Steppenstein there? Yes, he's he kind of he's looking around, bewildered a little bit, kind of frightened by the Tucker's fact good. that the whole town is there. Tucker's going to usher him up, and he's going to he's going to bend down since you know he's he might be a runt of a Goliath, but he's still seven feet tall. Yeah, he's going to lean down and whisper in uh, in the boy's ear, "Are you ready to start your training, lad?" He and nods vigorously. Then come with me. And he's going to Tucker's going to step up to whatever sort of podium they have or whatever whatever place. There's kind of like a raised mound, sort of at the head of, at the at one end of the field. Okay, and he's going to, I guess for now he, well, he, it's not like he put away the head, but he's going to lift it up and he's going to display it to everybody once again. This creature was the mastermind behind all of your loved ones being taken. There's, there's kind of like a, there's like a shocked, a shocked sort of feeling spreads through the crowd. Some people point and say, what is that? And cry out like, why, why did you bring it here? Tucker's going, well, I think that... Other, others are like, it's dead. Can't, it's just a head. Kana, what are you talking about? Kana would, go, would respond to that question, but Tucker would first answer to uh, the, the first question. Uh, this is an abomination. Neither, neither of this plane nor of the fey plane. It is what was once a man made himself into the unnatural. Something that should not exist in this world or the fey wild. Because everybody, everybody knows about the Feywild being in conjunction with our plane, right? Uh, it's not, like, common knowledge, but people know know that uh, Fey creatures come from somewhere. They know that they aren't... They know that they aren't naturally from here. Yeah. Okay, so... Yeah, um... Tucker will explain. This, uh... This creature had the knowledge... The knowledge of a former leader of this of this uh, township and then uh, he'll put it he'll rest it down on a table if there is one mm-hmm. uh, he's made sure to have the eyes bound since they arrived back he's covering up the eyes and then Connor will respond to the question as to why they haven't just gotten rid of it and she'll say because it's not dead this thing is capable of regenerating itself it's been trying to reform itself since we since we defeated it. We're here now to discuss how to properly dispose of it and permanently dispose of it. That is, but we wanted to bring you here to have you understand exactly why we, uh, or exactly what we faced and what we may have to continue to face. Okay. There's murmurs and concern from the crowd. Uh, old Jean steps in at this point and says... And that's why it will be all of our jobs. We will need to control and change and handle this thing together. If we work, if we work hard and we work as a whole community, we will survive this and we will make it through this. I will take I will take charge of this first. It will be at my house and we will we will listen to we will listen to these Heroes, Kana and Tukra. Cypress and this Wayne. new fellow, Wayne. <laughs> yeah, Kana will whisper to him, Oh, that's Wayne. And, and my, fi- my fine friend Wayne here claps Wayne on the shoulder. Wayne just looks a little nonplussed. Like, what? I guess? Yeah, just like, Wayne kind of cry- says Wayne just the same way that Gene said it. Yes. Imitating him. Uh, and... Ooh. And uh, the town responds positively to Gene. They they trust him. They know that he will control it. Gene looks back to Kana and says, "So how so how do we how do we need to what do we need to do to prevent this thing from coming from returning from coming back?" The reason we wanted everybody uh, sorry, wrong voice. 
the reason that we wanted everybody to understand uh, the situation was that we don't know if all of the creatures that it's, it's summoned forth as its minions have been disposed of. For now, we would like to make sure that the, uh, the town guard stays vigilant to these things. And it's not a matter of them carrying people off anymore. It's a matter of them trying to invade the town to recover their master. So we would just like to make sure that the, the town guard and the town watch that was established after the orc attack is still in effect. As for now, uh, the ma we have discovered that cold iron is a, is a feasible way to make sure that this creature does not regenerate. It's been necrotizing ever since we stuck it with my, with my dagger, which is made of cold iron and has been very effective in the fight against it. I'm really hoping that the Lady Green isn't offended by this, <laughs> but I guess she would understand that the that uh, matters being that the, what yeah. they are, it's necessary. Hearing that, hearing that cold iron does affect it so much, uh, makes the Lady Green, or makes Mister yeah, Mistress Green, uh, she kind of is surprised by it. She, at, she turns and asks, kind of. Is it true? The the cold iron affects it so? Bit ironic, isn't it, concerning that he used to he used to hate the face so much, and now he, that he's become one, his own his own devices are used against him. Well we we had we had sealed him away and uh, and hoped that our hoped that when he changed, when he became like us, his perspective would change. I'm sad to see that it seems it hasn't. Well, he, Tukra might say, the problem with uh, adding human hubris to a creature of fey magic is that they will consider themselves to be a, a greater being than everybody else, it would seem. Tuck, we, as we know, Tukra doesn't have a, the best view of, of human nature. Mm -hmm. So, he's a, I mean, he's matter of fact about it. It's not like, every, he doesn't go by a, Generality, but he knows from human to human, hubris can be a humongous negative. Yeah. Uh, he's also, there's no human in the party right now, so he's not feeling too bad about saying it out loud. <laughs> oh. Um, all right, so... So Gene sort of... He goes on to speak. He starts to try and cheer on the people who survived and express gratitude, and he sends out some orders to bring out bring out food and start having like a, a feast to celebrate this terrible time passing the town and the mistress green looks still looks concerned and she gestures she gestures for you for everyone to come over and to see her and she asks she uh she asks well for now I think we can I think we can prevent it from returning. But this kind of creature is unnatural already. I don't I don't know how much more powerful it it must be having this having that evil man inside of it. I think we need to find a way to seal it away forever, a permanent solution. I don't no, I don't know how we can do something like that. Do you guys do do any of you know someone know somewhere where creatures can be sealed away or some or groups that know how to do something like that? Do we think that it will eventually get um, immunity to the cold iron? Based on what you know about cold iron, it won't get immunity to it, but it also isn't a permanent solution. If somebody, like if, as Tucker has said, if creatures manage to break in and take the head away, it would, re it would regenerate. You don't know if perhaps maybe back at the site of the tower, the body will eventually regenerate a head on its own. That's what I was worried you about. Don't That's know. why I buried them. It might be, even though it might be separate, it might be like worms, where eventually each piece will turn into its own full one. Mm. You don't know, basically you don't know enough about this creature, which so no one really knows that much about it, because it's kind of something new. Hearing, th concerning that, then I think Kana 
who is probably the most, I think she's actually my most intelligent character. She think okay, that limits us to, we need somebody who's an expert in terms of eldritch beings. We also would, we could also go to somebody who is a bit more knowledgeable about aberrations, or I'm thinking we need a wizard. We need a researcher of magical creatures. A, a wizard would definitely be helpful, some sort of well-studied and, arcane person. And at that, Kana's going to realize, wait a second, the only person I know... Oh, no. <laughs> See, uh, she's thinking about Tur, and she's thinking, oh, God. Is that my... Or, oh, God. Sorry, I forget. <laughs> we're in a... We're in a... In a poly... A polydeific pantheon. Um, um, Cypress sees that look of concern on uh, Kana's face and says... Let's not do that and find any other wizard. Any other wizard. I am in concurrence with uh, with Cyprus on that one, says Kana. Tucker goes, hmm, uh, yeah, I, I don't know if he's exactly who we want either. Um, <laughs> honestly, he se- although he seems knowledgeable, I feel that his knowledge may be more focused, it might not be focused in the area that we need. But... Are you getting it? Looks, it sounds like he makes it shit is. up all the time. Tucker's. Are, are we sure that he's even a real wizard? Me, I just realized. Has Tur ever actually shared his main study with anybody else? Oh, no. No, uh, not with, not no? With okay, party. never mind. Not even Kale. Alright, never mind. I, I'll. I'll just. I'll, uh... So Kana actually. Kana would actually remember this also. Uh, Tucker remembered that they'd fought that sort of skeletal version of this sort of creature in the in the sacred shrine before, in that place where the satyrs were guarding it. That was sealed by various different elements of fey magic. Huh. And it didn't work. It did end up getting released from its seal, but it didn't release itself. It could be something perhaps... Perhaps you could study that magic, and that might help you. Or you also learned about a group of a chivalric order that just figured out, or that uh, takes care of evil monsters and things. Yeah, you know what? I think if uh, if Cypress were to bring it up again, Kana might say, this might be a good chance for us to go and visit uh, Far Eldrith. If they... We'd have to take this thing in tow, but in all honesty, the further we get it away from its body and its followers, it might be the better. So, Kana says it might be a good chance to go to Far Eldrith. What does Cypress say? She know she knows that they do deal with evil creatures and things like that, and they would probably be happy to try and help. You could find there's a high likelihood you could find someone to deal with it. Do you want to go back to your home country? I don't know. She, does she have any bad blood? Why did she leave? Uh, it was a. It was a. <clears throat> her quest. It was sort of her uh, enlightenment quest from her order. She was supposed to go out and sort of experience the world and gain a better understanding to be able to then return and make her vi to become the the head monk. Yeah, she learned some people are idiots and they wander around doing stupid things and pretending to be knowledgeable people. She has learned that. That is very true. Um, Yeah, so I don't think she would have any qualms with going back, but she probably would just try and avoid going to her... If if she had to go back to her order, she would make sure, very plainly sure that everybody understands. All I've seen so far... I'm here on part of my mission. I'm not returning from it. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I mean, when I generated her, she had no... It wasn't like she was banished or anything. She was just out on her spirit, her quest for spiritual enlightenment. Mm-hmm. That was sort of the... Just of it. Sort of, I know, generic, but still sort of the yeah. teenage monk. Not a bad... Not bad. Yeah, it's not like they Ooh. shelter them until they're in adulthood. They just send them out into the world to try and experience and gain, gain knowledge about how the flow of key works within the world. Okay. So, um... They're not helicopter. The, the, the elder monks not are not helicopter, helicopter parents. Monks. Yeah, they're not helicopter monks. They have no spinning moves. No. Well, there's one, but he, he ended up flying off a cliff. He, he spun too hard and uh, ended up dropping. 
it, it was a sad day actually for the order. He was a he was pretty well liked. Okay, so um, so you're gonna go. You're gonna make a trip to Far Eldrith. So you guys would need to plan out how you want to do that. Who I would assume Kana wants to go do planning. What does Cypress want to do while Kana is planning? Is she gonna go with her while she goes to get supplies? Is she gonna faff about town? Is she gonna hang out with the snakehead? She's probably done with that snakehead. Uh, probably faff about town. All right. What does? How does she want to faff about? We've got people partying in the in the field. We've got pretty much nobody in the town proper. Some people are out doing the are out on like a patrol around the edge of the town to keep an eye out for any invading snake monsters. He's gonna party. All right. <laughs> if Cypress is doing that, Tukra is actually. What's the kid's name again? What's the last name? Uh, Steppenstein. Steppenstein. Thank you. Kind Thank of, you. I'm writing that down. I, I I'm can't. pretty sure I made that up, but. Uh, we didn't it will be now canon that that is his name. I am putting that down because honestly, I'm tired of, of forgetting. Additional features of allies and organizations. Steppenstein. Never need a reason. Never need a rhyme. Everybody, Steppenstein. All right, Steppenstein boy. She heard that uh, monks eventually swear off alcohol, and she wants to be able to uh, get a good feel for what it does before. Fair enough. Perfectly legit. Yeah, uh, okay, so while Kana is planning, uh, Tucker will be there for the plan, but he's also going to be taking time to show the boy what to, the, the young man, you know, some ideas on how to, uh, how to address a creature like this. He's hoping that by seeing how they, they try and deal with this creature, that he'll understand a bit more about how Jewetic mentalities go. Okay. Understanding that, to him, this creature is not supposed to exist. It's, mm-hmm. not, it's not good for the balance of nature. And the boy, having seen what it's done to his his village, un- will probably understand that. Yeah, creatures that go about, you know, using their own machinations to affect the natural order of things are not are not with the druidic mindset. Okay. So, uh, Kana is planning. She's looking at a, She's looking at her map, trying to figure out some stuff. And. Baron and Jarell are with her discussing the di- discussing the various routes. Like, do you want to go straight over straight over land, straight over like the grassland, cut through that area, and head down? Do you want to take a long route on a road? There is a road that goes all the way down, joins up with more of a major road, and then goes into the in through the mountains. Or you could sort of mix both of them, go down the road part way, cross off and enter in at the forest in the like direct heading directly east into the kingdom and there are various different options while you're doing that or while Kana's doing that you're talking to the little Steppenstein kid showing him pointing out like the different things and the planning takes a while so you're showing him different things you're channeling like little itsy bitsy bits of magic you let him hold the shadow face staff for a moment and over the course of over the course of this kind of discussion, he starts to he starts to look a little different, like he starts to look a little woozy. And it takes Tucker a little while to notice because he's not so he's not so great at picking up on the cue aspect that he's not feeling well, but you can tell something's different about him. Mm. Eventually he tells you, I'm Miss, Mr. Takra, sir, I don't... Something feels weird. I don't feel so good. Is he still holding the staff? No, he's just kind of... He's kind of standing next to you. Okay. Near the snake head. Takra's going to run a medicine check and possibly uh, an arcana check if need be. Um... Let's see. With your level, with your medicine proficiency... You can tell he's like not sick. Like you could you could see from before he hasn't caught a flu or anything. He wasn't <clears throat> sick when he came earlier. It seems to be some sort of some sort of mystical ailment. So you could do either a arcana or a nature check. 
to see if you can figure out what's going on. Well, I think that, yeah, well, I guess he would be more attuned with the idea of, of a nature check. And anyways, it's the same modifier mm -hmm. either way. So, yeah, he's going to run a nature check. Come on, high rolls, no whammies. That's a 10, middle of the road. It's a 10. Um, so you can tell... You can tell a little bit of what's going on. You see that there's a little bit of a difference in the flow of natural energy around where you are. And you notice that the uh, the Shadow Fey staff, it, no, it always has those little tendrils of Shadow Fey energy kind of flaking off and coming out of it. They're flowing towards him. Like they're not touching him, but they're flowing, instead of just kind of going off ethereally into the air, they're moving towards in his direction. And So kind of like those lightning orbs when you poke them. Yeah, yeah. the static orbs, yeah. Exactly. You don't know if that's good, don't know if that's bad. It's different, that's all. And it's at this point that Cyprus has, she's been enjoying her time, she's been having several drinks, she joined in some sort of... She joined in some sort of a big singing, drinking contest sort of thing. It's very confusing. There's a big bar. Everybody has a big mug of beer. And everyone everyone who's drinking all has to lift it up together. And then you all have to lift and drink it together. If you spill your mug, you have to go drink another mug. Or two more mugs. And then you have to do the next one, too. Jeez. So, thankfully, Cyprus is very, is very good. Unless Cypress wants to mess up on purpose, which some people clearly do. So I'm going to make a uh, constitution check to see how she's feeling about this. Okay. 13, I think she's feeling pretty good. Yeah, she it is... has not made her... S so she's, she's failing on purpose. She's fortified. She feels, whoop, she feels good. She feels a little soft and fuzzy. But that's what some of the that's what some of the monk martial arts stuff is about feeling. She's like, oh, this is how you're supposed to do that technique. Okay. I get it. She's doing well. She notices Tucker talking to this kid, and the kid's looking kind of woozy. She wanders over and and uh it looks interesting. Do you want to continue carousing or do you want to go investigate what's going on there? Oh, I'll go investigate. All right, it kind of looks like Tucker got this guy, got this little kid intoxicated or something. He's he's wobbling a little bit. Uh, what do you say when you get over there? Um, carrying the mug of alcohol, of alcoholic beverage. Yes. I say, Tucker, oh my man, you're showing this kid a good time already. Yeah, this stuff is good. Holding up the uh, mug of beer. Tukwa is going to glare at Cypress for a second because he think he doesn't realize she's drunk until after he glares, thinking she's making light of the situation. Mm -hmm. And then he realizes, oh no, she's smashed. She's not smashed. She's just lightly intoxicated. To his mind, she's smashed. Uh, he's, seen, he's seen. He's seen what happens when Kale. Some like special druid stuff. I don't know yet. I heard that What do you mean you don't know? Are you trying to decide whether you should give it to me? Come on. Tukra is... I turned to the kid. What, what, what have you been drinking? <laughs> Not nothing, lady. I've been here with Mr. Tukra. He's been showing me magic. Well, that I don't might be feel part of the problem. good. I, I hand him my mug. But mom says I can't have beer yet. Tucker slaps it out of his hand. No. <laughs> okay. But Tucker, at this point, Tucker's getting a little concerned, so he might have have the young Steppenstein boy sit down. Okay. He's going to actually, he's going to try and recreate the scenario that allowed him to travel into the Feywild. Okay, so he's he was going out to try and like, the first time or the second time? The first time when he was out and he was playing his drums to try and bring himself into the the flow of nature. Okay, is he going to do that? Is he going to try and do that to go himself? He's going to try and bring along the boy if he can. They're not moving from that spot. 
but he's trying to see if there's something affecting him on the Fey plane. Okay. Um... Uh, at this point, uh, Cypress is beginning to realize that things aren't booze-related. Yes. And it's like, oh, crap. So Tucker like, sits down, and he's, he draws out some symbols in Druidic on the ground, and he asks Cypress to move, to move back a little bit, help him position the boy in the center. And, and uh, she does so. Yeah. Tuck was going to say, Kid, I need you to listen to my drum. I need you to feel the music, feel what you're feeling, and let it all cycle through you. Just feel feel the energy around you. He's trying to get... His voice is getting a little bit more hypnotic. He's, mm-hmm. trying, he's not actually casting a spell, but he's trying to get this kid into the mindset of being able to travel with him. Okay. Tuck, also, let's not forget that Tuck... Is he going to explain what's going to happen? You and I are going to see if we can find out why you're feeling sick. My staff's reacting to you in a strange way. I feel like we need to... I feel like we need to travel together to the Feywild to figure out what's, what's wrong. Okay. You're not going to be in danger. I will protect you. But we need to find out what's happening before anything bad happens. Tucker's not one to mince words. We know this. Mm-hmm. I, I'm sorry if the Steppenstein boy gets scared by this, but... Yeah, it's just kind of how Tucker operates. He also right. doesn't really know how to be a teacher. <laughs> that is, that's entirely reasonable. So, Cypress, you have got... Tucker is now doing this ritual with the kid. It looks kind of funny. Are are you going to, like, stand guard around them? Do you want to try and deflect people's attention if someone comes over to look at it? Do you want to step inside and see if you can go with them? Um, I don't think that, I think that she has realized the gravity of the situation. Um, she's going, if, if people come to investigate, um, he's, uh, she's going to mention that, uh, she's going to say, don't worry, um, he's had a bit too much to drink and Tucker's performing an alcohol purging ritual. All right. I do have the spell, remove Legitimate. poison. That is true. Um, could I get a perception check from Cyprus also? Eleven. Unless I have disadvantage, which I feel like I might. Uh, no, you got a 13 before. You, you're fine. So you're keeping an eye out. You're, you're going to sort of run, run interference if anybody comes over to try and see what's going on with this kid. But no one's really going to... People are probably not going to question you guys right now, considering you just saved the town. So you're in a good, you're in a good position. Uh, so Tukra starts doing his drums. He goes gentle and slow and kind of builds, builds a natural feeling rhythm and Steppen, the Steppenstein boy kind of waves back and forth. At first he's jerky and offbeat, but then he slowly kind of gets in time with it, moves properly, and... Once he once he's really in rhythm with the beating, Tucker eases off and slows down and sits down himself. starts starts going at the same sort of pace. He holds out the he holds out the staff and he breaks it into the two club components and puts yes. one on the boy, holds one himself, and he can feel sort of the bonds the bonds on his spirit the bonds on himself loosening a little bit. Uh, it takes more effort than it did before. It was, it, it was easy that time. Carrying two people into the Feywild is not going to be an mm-hmm. easy thing for a first-timer. He's really got to strain his mystical powers. But eventually, the boy also seems to be loosened and also comes free, and you're able to... You travel, and it's... Before it was instantaneous. You were there immediately. You were in that sort of dark wood... Now you kind of have to travel along a path. There's sort of a distance we're, you're bringing him. We're not in a nexus. We're at, we're in the middle of a town. It's not mm-hmm. exactly the most fey natural place. It is the most fey natural place in town, though. Ah. It's a field. It's a natural. It's a natural area. They haven't done too much work on it. All right. Um, when you do manage to arrive in the fey wild, you immediately see what's happening. The Naga head 
is still huge. It's still staring at you. It is... It is, uh, different than before, though. Before it was purely the head of the man. Now it's kind of... It's scaled over and it's changing. It looks like there's sort of a... There's almost a wave of the snake-like visage coming on top of it, being pushed back by a wave of the human-looking visage. And it reflects how, on the Naga head, you see the one eye that's the lantern, the one eye that's the snake. There's some sort of struggle over this being, for what form it should be, for what type of creature it should be. And it is imposing and making noise and staring balefully at the boy. He is kind of raised up off the ground. He's in a stupor standing there. It's almost like his spirit was here already, and you've just come to rejoin with him. And it's it's confusing for a moment, because there are two of him. There's the one that's standing in the middle of the field area with the, with the Naga head, and there's the one that's chained to you by the staff. All right. When Tucker sees this, he's going to say, Kid, whatever you do, do not let go of that, of that half of my staff. We're going to figure this out, okay? That is your fey form. That is your astral form that has taken some semblance of reality, of, uh, of physical, physicality on this plane. Mm-hmm. Tucker might be BSing. I don't know if that's actually accurate, but... He's not, he's not too far <laughs> off. What is he going to do? Tucker is going to try and attack the. Uh, he's going to try and cast Moonbeam in, on this plane. He need, he's going to try and create a continuous stream of damage that's also. It's going to affect the shapeshifter to try and weaken this this creature. Okay. Where's my. There's my spell sheet. Okay. Yeah, I still have Moonbeam prepped. So. Also, yeah, I feel like. Ethereal energy like that might be my best way. If that doesn't work, he's going to try and stab it with the with the face side of his staff, or where the tendrils are coming out. Okay. So start off with moonbeam. Uh, what do I have to roll uh, for that? Moonbeam, if I remember, is a. I think it's a save rather than a roll than an attack roll, if I remember. Yeah, moonbeam. Here we go. A silvery, a silvery beam of pale light shines down in a five-foot radius, 40-foot high cylinder, and centered on a point within range. Until the spell ends, dim light fills the cylinder. When a creature enters the spell's area for the first time on a turn or starts its turn there, it is engulfed in ghostly flames that cause searing pain, and it must make a constitution saving throw. It takes 2d10 radiant damage on a failed save, or half as much damage on a successful one. All right. Uh, when you cast a spell using go. a spell slot of third level or higher, the damage increases by 1d10 for each slot level above second. So Tucker's going to put a little chutzpah into this, and he's going to cast it at third level. Okay, so he's going to channel as much moonbeam as he can. Yeah. Uh, and on each of your turns after you cast a spell, you can use an action to move the beam 60 feet. I don't need to worry about that. So yeah, he. Uh, so it's a matter of the constitution saving throw. All right. To decide whether it and takes... your DC is up to 15 now, yeah. remember? Yep. So it's a matter of whether it's taking full damage or half damage. So the head gets... The moonbeam streaks down out of out of the sky. It seems... You, you know, Tucker knows he put a little extra effort into it, but it seems stronger even than that should be. Something about being here on the fae, in the Fey Plane seems to be amplifying his powers. I like it. Uh, it's it almost looks so dense you could like move it and grab it and do something with it. But uh, it strikes down and hits upon the top of the head and just streaks off as though it's water, harmlessly seeming. The 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 oh, the head turns and one of its eyes seems to concentrate concentrate on Tukra now. The snake eye seems to be the snake eye seems to be sort of looking at you. There's almost a pleading. There's not like an aggressive feel to it. It just seems to be looking at you, looking towards you. And the other eye, the lantern, the lantern pupil is still staring directly at the boy. 
Okay. Should should Tukra take a wisdom check to see if he can he can pick up what the Naga side of this creature's trying to throw down? Sure. You can put a give me an insight check. Okay. Insights. I don't think he's trained in that, unfortunately. Uh, he's not, but he still gets a plus four. Thank goodness. That is a fourteen. Okay. Um. The. The Naga. The Naga side seems to be asking for help. Like it's, you don't know what it wants help with, but it wants help. It's it's clearly in combat with the other side. The other side is doing is clearly doing something. Well, seeing the struggle, I think Tucker would be able to surmise that the creature wants to be separate from its from its human half, the half that tried to take over its natural self. And Tucker saying that is okay. Tucker's going to have a moment of just thinking, this is a good teaching moment. He's going to turn back and say, kid, the task of the druid, first and, fore- first and foremost, is to help maintain the natural order of things. Okay. If you are of good heart, that also means helping creatures, not creatures of nature that are in peril. I'm going to see if I can save this poor Naga from its human, well, captor, for lack of a better term. Mm-hmm. I'm guessing the Steppenstein kid, I'm hoping he's listening, but at the same time, he's probably a little distracted by the fact that there's this gigantic Naga head and he's on a different plane of reality. Well, he's also kind of, he's also still groggy and confused and doesn't seem to be all there. And there's another version of him, stand, like, floating in the air, being entranced by this head. Tucker's just feeling like being, he's pulling off being a cool teacher, so I guess he doesn't really... He'll, he'll fill the kid in when he's actually... Or he'll hopefully not have to fill the kid in too much, but he will see what he can do about that. Tukra is going to... Okay. Having never been blessed with true titanic Goliath strength, he's going to try and use his beast form to transform into the biggest creature he can, or the strongest creature he can. Okay, um... Describe what kind of beast you want to turn into. You don't have to worry about game statistics, but what kind of what kind of creature do you want to be? What is the strongest creature he's ever seen? That's a great question. He's from the mountains. He's from the mountains, but he trained in the forest. I guess in terms of just pure might, he would probably go with the with the dire bear if he could. But obviously, dire bear is a little bit outside of his druidic range right now. So I guess it would have to be his brown bear form. Also, I mean, it could be a gorilla, but I don't know if they're more jungle or, or mountain. He was... I mean, he was in both. Yeah. Uh, which do you want to go with? Jungle? Rather, when he was being... When he was a child or when he was being trained, Tucker had an encounter with one of those with one of those creatures, with like a giant a giant gorilla or a giant bear. Which, which do you want it to be? Well, are we... Are we... Doing this more story homebrew, or are we doing more this... More story. Okay. This is going to be like a... I think Tucker... Something that might be built up to. He might... I've been aiming for him to eventually be able to turn into a, a an ape or a gorilla. Okay. I think that if there were mountain gorillas, he might have had a chance a chance encounter with one. Mm-hmm. That was... And, you know, for a, a spindly Goliath kid, seeing this massive, you know, muscle-bound creature that also can show such kindness kind of probably resonated with him so he would probably try and draw upon the image of a of a of a giant ape yeah so so when tucker was a when tucker was a child when he was uh thrown when he was first exiled by the by the goliath clan he was picked up and brought to his druid trainer by a giant silverback gorilla yes and i like this that kind of image the thought of that, the protective nature of it, the sort of fathering, the connection with mentorship, all of that comes to mind, and you s- just sort of bolster out into this huge, massive, amplified version of a silver silverback gorilla. Yeah. Tucker, but I, if you don't mind, I'd like to do a little bit. Go for it. I think that he thinks about the silverback, so the idea is that actually, as he's morphing, he has the you know he has his white tribal tattoos across his his stone brown skin. Mm-hmm. So the gorilla's fur actually will become a mirror of that, where it, it actually looks like it has these patterns in its fur that mimic his his tribal runes. But the rest of it's this large brown, and then he's got that silver back that you talked about. Mm-hmm. So it's very ethereal looking, or it's a very interesting looking 
giant giant gorilla. Okay. Uh, let me write this down somewhere. So, um, so Tucker is now a giant gorilla. He also dispelled Moonbeam, realizing it's having no effect. Yeah, the the stream of the stream of moonlight comes to a close and finishes washing off, dribbles down to the ground, still strangely thick and viscous for light. But um, now you're a huge gorilla. What do you want to do as that? Tucker is going. You said that there's sort of it's a dichotomy right now, or it's a it's, it's a sort split. of like a like a if you you know how there were the word art filters where you could have the two colors changing from one to the other mm -hmm. on Microsoft Word. It's like that on like a diagonal across. Okay. The top the top uh, left side of the head is human, with the left eye being that. That uh, lantern eye and the bottom right side is snake, and it's sort of pushing and wavering back and forth in a sinew in like a line. You can see it moving and changing as like as things happen. And the snake side is beginning to falter and get smaller and smaller. Tukra is going to with his gigantic muscly you know, eight form. He's actually going to grab at each of their separate nostrils in the middle where it's where it's splitting. Mm -hmm. And he is going to call upon his, you know, his uh, more ethereal nature within the Feywild. Yeah. And the fact that he's probably, he's more of a creature of magic right now than anything else, considering that he's, he's a bit bolstered by the Fey. He's actually going to try and split apart the two pieces. Okay, so you're going to try and like... Physically rip apart. Tear it apart? Yeah. Um, make me a strength check at a plus 10. Whew. I like this. All right. That is a 16. You struggle and use all your might, and you can feel your uh, your hands are both in, and you can feel the flesh changing on your hands as it as the snake continues to get smaller and smaller, and the uh, your push you're pulling and pulling and you're moving it. It's being changed, and its eyes are its eyes turn from. Both eyes now turn from the boy and stare at you. But now the head is returning to be entirely human. You haven't managed to rip it in half. But you have managed to turn its attention to you. Okay. The um, boy that was floating in the air, the copy, has collapsed to the ground. And out of the corner of your eye, you notice small tendrils from the staff are now, from the staff that's in your version of the Steppenstein boy, are trying to squiggle along the ground, trying to reach the copy that has fallen. Hmm. Okay. I don't know if that's a good or bad thing. Is the boy... Or is either version of young Steppenstein... In, is it distressed? Is the is the fey form of him distressed at the side of the tendrils? Or is it more like he's, he's willing to welcome um, them in? Neither side is distressed. They're both still just kind of in a stupor. They're both, they're both kind of non-active. All right. Because in my mind, I feel like this, the tendrils or the fey magic within his in the within the Rowan staff is feeling like, uh, feeling a kinship in that it's not whole. Neither is this boy. We need to aim to be whole again. Mm -hmm. But that's just me thinking in my own in my own terms. Well, you still have one of the halves of the staff. Yeah. Um, Tukra, can I make one more strength check to see if I can stop the the transformation, or...? Uh, the transformation is almost entirely done. There's Tuck only a tiny bit of, like, hood popping out of the side of the neck. Only a little bit of scales remain. It's almost entirely human again. Okay, Tukra... And it was, it was human before as well. It yeah. was entirely human the first time you saw it. Okay, um, Tukra is going to... He's going to grunt, and he's going to... <laughs> and revert back to his uh, his Goliath form. He's going to run back to the Steppenstein boy and thrust his uh, his half of the Rowan staff into the hands of the Fey Steppenstein. Okay. Uh, the tendrils from that staff now kind of 
eke out, and they, the two different ten, the two different sets of tendrils like touch together and pull, and the boys come back together, mm. and he finally seems to wake up a little bit, and he looks around in confusion and distress. You explained to him what was going to happen, but he was kind of out of it. He doesn't necessarily know. And on your back, you can feel the burning glare of that, of the of the head staring at you. And it's still, it's still bound. It's still covered. It cannot, like, it can't speak. It can't make. It's making noises and trying to do things to you. But it's not acting on you right now. All right. So Tucker's going to. Does the staff want? Is the staff okay with leaving the boy's hand? Um, now that the two halves have kind of merged together, or the two pieces have merged together, it's, it's starting to try and, like, wrap him up in tendrils, which you remember that's what the staff did to you when you were in that dream. You woke up after it finished wrapping you around with tendrils. All right. He's going to pick up the, the boy. Mm-hmm. And it's gonna say, lad, I don't think I can do this on my own. We need to, we need to strike that creature, the human side of that creature together. I think this staff is trying to tell us something, but I think it needs to actually. We need to give that this. Uh, we need to give this the human side of this thing a good thrashing. Okay. So Tucker's going to, he's going to take the uh, upper side of the staff. Does the staff, the side that he doesn't usually hold in his upper hand. Is it a bit more pointed at the end, sort of like a walking stick almost, or is it a is it a, just a staff, a perfectly, like, does it have the same diameter all the way across the staff? Roughly. It's like, it's gnarled like a stick, like a walking stick you would find in the ground, but it's pretty much the same length the whole way, okay. or same width. Um, I'm probably playing this all wrong, but I'm just doing the best I can. There's no wrong. Tukra is going to walk over with the kid, and there he's going to... Okay, I have the tendril successfully wrapped up the kid, or... Uh, I thought you picked up the kid. Yeah. So, give me a, give me a, an idea. So here, here's how the, here's how the kid was laying. He was laying, uh, laying down on his back. This one hand was kind of held down towards his legs, one hand was up by his head. He was holding the staff in the hand that was down by the legs. That's how it kind of connected them together. And the tendrils were wrapping him around, sort of like a cocoon, sort of like a hive or something. When you picked him up, did you take the staff, or did you I left cross it, it across it his arms, leave it hanging down by his side? I tried to position it so that he it would actually still be working, because honestly, at this point, Tucker trusts the staff. He understands that it's trying to guide him as much as anybody else. Okay. So he feels like something good will happen to Steppenstein if, uh, if he actually... Let's it work its work its course. So, you're holding the boy. The staff kind of finally it finishes wrapping him around, and then the Steppenstein boy vanishes. The staff clatter like falls into your arms, and he's gone. Mm. Hoping that I did not just make a huge mistake. Um, we will find out. Yep. We will. You find are out. now. That happens is we just kill the kid. You are now alone with the giant head. The staff is in your arms, and it is trying to wrap you in tendrils now. Like, it's trying, it's stretching, but it's going very slowly. You are still there, you're still facing the thing. What do you want to do? Tucker is going to lift up the staff with both hands, and he's going to plunge it into the the middle of, like, the, the middle of the brow of the, of the human side. If it's starting to, I'm guessing, or at whatever point he can strike that sort of in the middle of this, of this thing. Um, I guess that would be, like, the, the artery right here. Okay. Because, I should say the, the carotid artery. Right. The one right on your neck, because yeah. it's only that little tiny chunk of neck that a snake left. Um, so you're going to plunge it in as hard as you can. Mm-hmm. What do you want to accomplish by plunging it into his neck? I'm trying to feed some fey magic into this creature that is 
that is we I'm hoping just to, to bolster the uh, the naga so that it can fight off the human side. Okay. Um, trying to feed magic in. Give me. I'm really hoping that an, I'm not using the Seven Stein Boys life force. Give me an Arcana check. Okay. That's a seven. So you plunge the staff in, and you're forcing magic through. You're forcing your power um, as much as you can get to go through it, and you're forcing too much. It's it's a powerful thing, but it hasn't been fixed really yet. It's kind of it's grown and it's gotten more powerful. Meeting with the great fae creature recovered it a little bit, but it's not able to handle like a full on high-powered druid, and you just got stronger recently. You just got more access to magic than you've had before. Uh, so you can feel the staff is weakening. Something is, like, it's, uh... At first, it kind of feels like you're getting a little bit of resistance, as if you're pushing something through a very narrow tube. But, you know how... If you've been like blowing through a little mini straw, and you can sort of feel a weakness forming. You can feel something start to like spurt out the side. Yeah. You're getting that kind of sense. You can either push on through, and it's possible, and you will you will get a probably po- you'll get probably a positive effect. You'll be able to push a lot of your sort of natural magic into this creature. But something bad might happen to the staff. Or you can stop before the staff gives, and you won't be able to get it. Won't be able to get enough magic in to do anything. The problem is that T- Tucker's now distressed that he might have just lost the boy. Um, so he's hoping to get some positive thing out of this, and who knows? Maybe if the staff does its job, then the boy will be released. But. Ah, uh, uh, the woes of not knowing everything. Um, Tucker's going to keep pushing. He's going to hope that he, hope for the best possible out- outcome and just say to himself, maximum effort. <laughs> uh, apparently Tucker likes Deadpool. Yeah. So, right. um, so you kind of push and push and push and you can feel the magic jetting out through. And suddenly it's as if a blockage has disappeared and there's no resistance at all. And all of your magic blows out all at once, and the staff cracks in two, exploding one half through through the little bit that is left that is snake, like right in between where it's snake and where it's not snake, completely severing that small segment off. And when that happens, you are blasted backwards. And you blast back through into the into the bushes, back out through the small sort of pathway you had to follow, take to get in through to get into the Feywild, and you wake up in the field. And the staff is broken in half and you only have one half. It still works as one of the two pieces from when you break it in half, but it's clearly broken. Like, it's jagged on the end, instead of being a nice, clean two pieces of wood. And the Steppen, the Steppenstein boy is there. Oh. He is unconscious, and he looks a little funky. Uh, he looks almost... He's got a few almost, like, elvish features. He's got, like, slightly pointed ears, and he is tinged ever so slightly blue. Did he just go Eladrin? Because that's awesome if he did. Um, hmm. Of course, now Tucker is dealing with the fact that his people may have just become this very thing that he... Well, actually, I think... I guess Tucker wouldn't have an issue with, an hybrid if, with a hybrid if it was actually a hybrid that tried to follow the natural order versus what this, what the Naga what the Naga abomination was trying to do, which was, you know, completely unbalance everything. So, we'll see what the Steppenstein kid turns into. Um... So, uh, and there's also, not just that, there is a very small snake with you. Oh, very, very tiny, very little. It slithers over to the boy and, like, curls up with him. 
So, for Cyprus, this is a very strange thing that's happened. Uh, a couple people have come by, you've told them, like, he, the boy just, the boy got carried away, someone fed him some beer, Tucker's just doing something to make sure he doesn't get sick. And then, all of a sudden, the boy was originally, he was sitting up, he was kind of still waving and woozy, but then he just, bam, lays down on the ground, flat out, starts breathing much more normally. And Tucker gets, and is, is suddenly just Tucker, blasting back a few feet, right? Yeah, Tucker just gets, it looks like you, it looks like Cypress just like drop kicked him in the chest, knocked him a good five feet backwards onto his ass. And he wakes up with a start, and Cypress can kind of can see all of a sudden the boy changes a little bit. He gets those slightly pointy ears, he gets like the jagged bit, jagged bottom of the ear, his skin tints and changes a little bit. It looks said, a little bit like Kana, but he's very different. Hmm. Kana's got this sort of etherealness to her. He nope. does not have any etherealness. Yeah, he's still pretty much a guy, but he's got a very blue skin tone. And for Kana, she's also got the constant wind blowing around, just get, making her look like she's constantly just got a breeze blowing through her hair. Yeah. Very regal. Um, okay, so Tucker's actually not too fussed because what he really, what he was really concerned about was making sure that the boy was still cognizant and uh, and that he was breathing and that he would actually wake up, that he wasn't comatose. So he's going to run a medicine check just to make sure you know that there's actually like eye responsibility. Like his, yeah. If the eyes respond to light, if he's if he's actually looking like he'll wake up from being unconscious, go for it. Okay. Uh, so medicine at a plus seven. Come on, let's actually see some decent rolls for once. That's a five. That's five a plus five. seven. So we got so ourselves a 12. at twelve. I think the answer is no. Let me look something up for a second. That's not the right answer. The answer to the question of can you get a good roll is no. Uh, I think you were correct there, my friend. That's my favorite answer. It's the best answer. It's the answer that definitely leads to the most character development. True. Bro, Unless it makes you dead. Everything seems normal with the boy, barring the sudden changes in sudden changes in physical features. His heart rate is incredibly slow, but his breathing is steady. His eyes, his pupils respond to light. Everything seems like he's alive. Okay. Um, and you said that my... So I didn't lose my druidic focus in the Rowan staff. It's just now it's a Rowan it's rod. It's broken in half. So more like a Rowan rod now. It can't actually be used as a... It's a Rowan pointy stick. Got it. Um, well, Tucker's going to be a little distressed at that, but he's not... Are there any shards of the second one? Does nope. it look like... It's completely just completely gone. So... Uh, out of character, I'm just thinking that it, the other half's lost in the Feywild for now. Or else maybe the little Naga is the... Or it might just be lost. Maybe. Um, but fortunately that just means that if we find, if he can finally find his master, the uh, the great tree that he saw in the Feywild, maybe he can give some insight on how to fully repair the rod, or also where to find the rest of the rod. So Tucker's thinking, another thing to add to the to the list of self-improvement. So yeah, yeah. So Tucker's not too too fussed. He mm -hmm. would be a bit more fussed if he'd fully lost the staff, because then he feels like he would have lost a connection to a great power that he wanted to find. Oh, absolutely. Um, so actually, Tucker's thinking, you know what? This is actually a pretty good outcome. I don't feel as bad. All right. I don't. I don't feel it. I've got to get better at my accents for these characters. Eh, it's fine. I, I'm pretty sure my accent for every character changes every single time. <laughs> um, so, yeah, Tukra is actually rather happy. He he does his best to try... He Can he run another medicine check to try and wake up the kid? Or... Uh, if you want to wake him up, you could wake him up. Like, you don't need a check to do that. Yeah. I've, I've suddenly got this image of All Might waking up Izuku in the first episode of... Uh, of My Hero Academia, where he's just his, the his palm is right next to the kid's face and just going, "Hey, come on, wake up, kid, come on, rise and shine." Uh, so that that's how you're waking him up. Just, we, yeah, well, more like. So Cypress sees Tucker like go down on hands and knees and very gently just slap the boy a bunch. Yeah, really lightly. 
Uh, does she want to do anything about that, or does she want to just let it happen? Um, it's not her kid. Okay. So, she sees, she sees that he's fine. Is she going to stick around? Does she want to go back to partying? Is she like... Uh, she's going to get a confirmation from, uh... Okay. All right. Uh, I think, is I think everything you, fine? I think he's okay, Cyprus. You can thank you. Thank you for your help. Okay, then I'm going to go back to drinking. All right. So we've spent some we spent some good time building up our building up our friend Steppenstein, saving his life. We think. Yeah. Well, Breaking a staff. Let's party with Cypress for a little while, because mm. I feel like she has not gotten a ton of screen time there. Um, so everyone's still enjoying themselves. You're you kind of based out a little bit. You lost your little bit of a fun, fun pleasantness going on. Uh, but you can quickly you quickly scope around and you see there's your same there's your same sort of ski ski rack drinking game over there. There's this interesting looking game of skill some people are playing they're taking these they're taking small copper pieces and they have to bounce them off a bounce them off a table to land them in a small spot everyone's cheering and cheering and drinking and having a great time there there's also there's also a table where people seem to be having some sort of competitive eating contest uh what appeal does any of that appeal to cyprus does she want to try her hand at anything uh, uh, maybe that bounce coin thing. All right. So Cypress come. Cypress walks up, and everyone, when they notice she's there, everyone sends up a big cheer. They're all excited to have one of the heroes with them. They say, "Hero, hero, please come play with us. Let let's teach you. Do you know how to play? Do you know how to play coins?" No uh, idea. What is this thing? Oh, it's a fantastic game. We take the we take our coins and two. Everyone gets to take a turn, and you have to try and bounce your coin off this table into the cup. If you can get it to go fur, if you can get yours to go further or higher, you're a winner. And everyone else, ha- everyone else has to take a drink. And then, if you miss, you have to take a drink. It's it's a wonderful time. So far, we've got our we've got our champion here, and they point to they point to Jarrell. He seems to be the best one at this game. Says, oh, Cyprus, are you going to join us? Oh, I give you fair warning, I'm pretty good at this. Yeah, you you ready to lose? A little a little friendly competition, I'm always happy to see that. He tell he waves he waves to the person holding his cup. He says, back another five feet. They step back fur they step back five feet further, and this is way he's already way further than anyone else is. So he's clearly in a he's clearly in a good position his cup is now 15 feet away from the table he lines up he lines up a coin and tries tries his hand to make it and flubs it horribly everyone laughs and everyone laughs and the guy carrying his cup comes back he takes a drink and offer offers a coin to you what do you say give it a try yeah let's give it a shot so how how far do you want your person to stand Everyone else is doing like five feet away. Jarrell did fifteen feet away for that huge for that huge attempt that he failed utterly. Um, what should I roll for co- for uh, stupid confidence? For Wisdom? stupid confidence? Yes. Um, do you mean like to see? Are Broken you stupidly confident? Like, I can do it. Uh, give me, give me a wisdom save. 19. All right. You've got you get a pretty good idea. You think I've got like a I've, I'm a good hand with a with a dart. I can probably handle like 20 feet away. Might be po- might be possible. It'll be tricky, but I bet I could do it. Do you want to go for extra? Do you want to go for less? You Let's think go it's for, uh... Well, when you say tricky, but I can do it, what, what, what target? Do, do I have, like, a rough idea of what I'm going to be rolling and rolling for? Uh, you'll be doing, you'll be doing dexter, uh, a dexterity check. 
if you want to do like a trick, you would have to you would have to do like a sleight of hand or something, or a performance thing if you want to do like a trick shot or a fancy thing. But it's just going to be uh, the DC will be roughly roughly the distance, give or take in feet. Okay. Give then or take like uh, one or two. Uh, ten feet away. All right. Go ahead and make that dexterity roll. Just a dex roll? Yeah, unless you want to do something fancy, like no. skip it, skip another one off it in midair. I, I don't have that kind of talent. Ten? All right, you, you, managed to, you managed to sink it. It bobbles around on the edge of the cup for a little bit. Everyone's getting, everyone's getting tense, and then it falls in. Cheers erupt. Everyone holds up their glasses and takes a drink, and the next round next round begins. Inspired by your ten foot shot, another one of the another one of the players tells his person to back up. He says, "I'm gonna I'm gonna take it even further." Sends him out to eleven feet away, and makes the shot, Woo. nailing it this time. Ooh. Jarrell says, "I can go more than that." And he sends some, he sends someone up to fourteen feet away. He's backing off a little bit from his previous attempt. He also makes it. The other the other drinkers bow out. They're they're intimidated. They don't think they can handle it. Do you wanna do you wanna try and beat them or match them? Fifteen feet. There's an ooh from the crowd. Everyone's everyone's interested. People are people are coming around to watch now. Go ahead 23. and make three. Twenty-three. Absolutely. This time, you send the shot. You bounce the shot off the table. It goes arcing high, high in the sky. Swish right in the center of the cup. No bobbling. No miss. No missing at all. Oh. The crowd goes crazy. Jarrell calls for calls a uh, trick shot, double or nothing. He's gonna try and do a fancy. He's gonna try and do something fancy to see if he can make a better shot. The goal now is to try and wow the crowd. To do something crazy. So he very carefully balances the coin on his elbow, and then he collapses, claps his elbow, sending it high up in the sky. Jumps and tries to do a bicycle kick to hit the coin, hopefully hitting it into the cup. Oh no. Uh-oh. He has had too much to drink, collapses down on the ground midway through the kick, and the coin just falls right on his head. <laughs> he gets up, everyone's laughing, he's kinda clap he's kinda dusting himself off in a good humored manner. Are you gonna are you gonna hold up to his his attempt to do something crazy? No. The crowd, the crowd is disappointed. They, a couple of them jeer lightheartedly, but the game kind of starts over again. People keep playing. People keep playing the normal way with the normal, normal non-incredible peoples. Do you want to search for another game? Do you want to go find go find Kana? See if she's figured out the plans yet. I'm gonna go find a different game because I'm enjoying this. All right. So there's the. There is the uh, pie eating contest going on. They're trying to eat. They're having this sort of big indulgent celebration there. I'm There's going to also... ask whether uh, eating pies would lower my uh, intoxication. If it was a meat pie, yes, but these are fruit pies. Fruit pies will actually make it so that the next intoxicating drink is slightly harder to not be intoxicated by. It's nice. Do it. I'm in. It's All right. Nice studying on the stomach. So. This one, we're going to need a constitution check. It's going to get harder with each... It's going to get harder with each subsequent pie. So... Just a constitution check or constitution save? Uh, constitution check to see if you can get it down. Constitution save might come afterwards, depending on how many okay. pies you put down. first one. Seventeen. All right. You put down the pie handily. 
all the other all the other competitors, everyone seems to make it through the first pie pretty pretty nicely. You are starting working on your second pie before the before everyone else is even done there first. Give me another constitution check. Twenty natural twenty. Damn. Woo! You basically you just find like the perfect angle and the pie just slides down your throat in a beautiful, delicious, you can't even taste it sort of pie milkshake. A couple other people try to imitate your imitate your technique. They have to bow out and they're gonna need that constitution saving throw to see if they to see if they yak or not. <laughs> oh yeah. One fellow barely makes it away from the table before he just erupts. Uh, Thankfully, he only hits the crowd. A couple people are grossed out and have to leave. Do other people but vomit as well when they get hit with the vomit? No, they're safe. This was just like, it's it's mostly just as if he hit them with a pie. Because it did not spend enough time down there. Ah. Ew. But everyone else is moving along. Everyone else is chugging along. They've all taken, everyone's taken down two pies. Now we're going to level up. We were doing, we were doing a cherry pie, easy, classic, normal. We're moving on to mixed berry now. Mixed berry is a little more difficult. Are you going to, are you going to bow out or are you going to keep going? Um, With the 20, it feels like you haven't even eaten a pie. What? With that 20 you just had, it feels like you've only eaten one pie. You've got plenty, plenty more room. Oh, wait, how big are these pies? They're like, uh... They're small. They're like hand pies. Okay, then yeah, I'm gonna do it again. Alright, go for it. We're on pie number three, mixed Ten. berry. What was that? Ten. Ten. Alright, you are... Str- you struggle, you're almost... You almost finish it through as the guy next to you starts going on pie number four. You are alright for now, but you are starting to feel stuffed. That that sort of that seeming confidence from the second pie did not translate well into eating another pie. It is probably more food than you've had at once, ever. Are you going to go on for pie number four? There's only there's only four more people, or four more people left. You and four competitors. Two people bowed out on pie number three. I think I'm going to get more drunk. You're gonna dr- you're gonna drink another beer. I'm gonna drink another beer. All right. Are you gonna continue the pie contest with this newfound beer confidence? Uh, I think I should roll for that. Go for it. Um. Wisdom Go. save. Yeah. Ten. Oh, it's a great idea. Pie sounds so good right now, and the next pie is an apple pie. Your favorite. I got a five. All right, you take one bite, and you you go to reach for your new beer to wash it down, and the last two pies just all come out. Ah! Uh. Oh, you manage. If you'd like, you can manage to spoil the guy's pie next to you, a little bit, as like a terroristic move. But you don't need to. You can aim. No, it it it, it was. He he played well. He was. He ate a lot more than I did. All right. He deserves the win. Now let's see. Can our last two competitors make it through their pie? Or is everyone going to tie? Oh, they both chomp through no problem. So you... You get given the third place... Third place award. It's a beautiful little... It's a beautiful little bronze pie on a necklace. They're... They're impressed. They did not think this tiny little waif of a monk would be able to eat as much as these big hardy fellows all of them as big as like cornish this big fella (laughs) but you've done it and everyone's kind of cheering and clapping some people are some people are laughing they thought it was a great they thought it was a good show a little grossed out because so many people threw up but that's what happens at these things it's all excess and wonder (sighs) now the sun is starting to come down a little bit. People are sort of dribbling, dribbling out, dribbling home. There's still a few, there's still a few events happening. Tucker is kind of satisfied that the boy's all right. He sees Cyprus. Are you going to go join her, or are you going to let her continue to have some youthful fun? Tucker's more thinking that 
as much as he uh, enjoys Cypress's company now, since they've had they've actually had a few adventures and misadventures together, mm-hmm. he's thinking his time would be better served one making sure the boy gets home and you know taking him back to his his home, and then going to check in with uh, with Kana to see how the plans are going. Okay. And also just to tell them exactly what just happened because he's not one to to keep such information from the party since it sort of involves them all, and he'd mm-hmm. want to check out the Naga head. To see exactly what happened there, after the uh, after his adventures in the Feywild. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so after having spent that time to recover, kind of adjusted yourself, you sort of drown, you sort of calmed yourself down with a couple drinks. Not not a lot, just one or two to sort of take the edge off of. Oh my God, something weird happened. Yeah, and I just um, lost my most powerful, well, half my most powerful artifact. Uh, so you kind of, you, you spot Cypress, she's, like, people are clapping her on the back, everyone's, everyone's cheering her around her, she looks like she's having a great time. There's a little bit of dribble on her, <laughs> on her front vest, but nobody seems to care. Have she's, a, she's popular. Have either of you watched, uh, that new show, Disenchanted? Yeah, yeah it's a good show. show. No. For some reason now I've got this... I'm get, I'm, I am now that I'm saying it, I'm getting kind of bean vibes on how, yeah, on how I'm describing her. Yeah, Tia Bean. For some reason right now, Cypress just sounds so much like Tia Beanie to me, or Bean, yeah. <laughs> but maybe um, with, but with brown hair, or auburn hair, rather than the uh, than the white hair. Yeah. Uh, but regardless, you kind of let her let her do her own thing. You go look for... Her. You're, you're escorting the boy over to Kana. You're going to ask, like, where his, where his house is. He's recovered a little bit. You get you got him some food. He's eaten a pie. It's delicious. It's apple. Mm. I'm gonna I'm gonna ask him how he feels, and I'm gonna can I run in our contact to see if he's actually got some some magic flowing off of him? Yeah, go ahead. Just go see if I get that nat, that vibe of nature magic. Mm-hmm. Come on, let's actually get a, something over a ten, please. That's a twelve. No. Absolutely has nature magic like inherent in him now. He is. is it's it's unclear whether it's because he's like so when you were training to become a druid it took a while before you had that sort of natural magic going through you as part of you it took yeah. a lot of meditating in forests sleeping under trees literally sleeping in dirt that kind of stuff getting the getting the sense of how my own natural energies flow with the with the earth around me exactly learning about like the the veins of how nature magic goes through the ground and all that sort of stuff, attuning to them. But he does have... It feels a little like that. They're similar, not quite the same, but there is some budding magic happening in him. But it's also different. It feels fey. It feels more... It feels more like the magic over there than the nature magic over here. Mm. So, hearing that... Or realizing that Tucker's going to say, Kid... I think to, I think today you took your first steps towards full druidhood. Uh, he he's got sort of this little bit of a sour expression on. He's kind of he's been quiet and meek. He he was a shy boy already, but he's even more sort of reserved than he was in the past. I think. Well, it, it, I. I think you might be right, I suppose. That... That must be what's going on, I guess. I'm not gonna lie to you, kid. What's happened to you is not something that I am familiar with. I have ideas. Uh, How much do you remember from what happened over there? I... There was this... face. And it kind of was staring at me. And I felt like there was something all around me. But then there was something else around me. And it kind of grabbed me. And it felt warm rather than cold. Tucker's going to, if that's all the kid remembers, he's going to actually tell him what he saw. Because he doesn't want to hide anything from Mm -hmm. this kid. Especially if he's trying to establish a rapport of teacher and student. He doesn't want to... He doesn't want to lie to the boy, so he'll just explain. Your feelings are exactly what happened, my boy. The you were feeling, I think you were feeling sick and woozy before we stepped over there because the the creature that attacked our village 
it was trying to possess you. It was trying to do something to you. When I went over there, half of your of your being was being enveloped by it. We managed to break you free. But then my staff, and he's going to hold up the broken half, mm-hmm. uh, it started to em- envelop you in its, uh, in its fey energy. If the kid's scared, yeah, it's yeah. Just, that's just how... Tucker's going to say that's how it's got to be if the kid's scared at hearing this. Nah, he, he doesn't seem scared. He still, he still is just kind of eyes downcast. He's... The, the little snake is... Twirl is, like, curled around his arm and he's absently stroking its head. Mm-hmm. He doesn't even seem to notice that he's doing it. Yeah. Tucker's not going to take much heat of that. He realizes that, that there's some connection now since... And he's going to explain, my staff took you into itself... The fey energy within it absorbed you, and I think it was trying to further you. It did the same thing to me not too long ago. I've gained more power since returning from fighting that that abomination. It uh, it took you in, and realizing I had no other choice if I wanted to get you back home and take care of that creature, I attacked it with the staff and released my magics. The staff exploded, knocking me back, and there you were, changed. I'm guessing he's seen by now that his skin has changed coloration. Yeah, he's he's noticed. He 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 knows what's kind of happening. I think I think, lad, you've actually you didn't gain your power in the same way that I did, but you have stepped towards becoming a druid in your own way. It might not be the same way I did, but I can still teach you from here, and. You're going to be okay. I think you. I hope you understand that. You're going to be fine. You're still you. You're just a little bit stronger for having gone through that and, and come out the other end. Uh, kind of... He, he stays quiet for a few moments, and then you see sort of a rush of color pulse down his pulse down his body. He's sort of there's a small bit of like reddish of a reddish sort of tinge that flies past and he it he it ch- it stays for a moment. He stays this kind of slightly redder color and he's he looks up in front of him. He walks more boldly for a moment. And then it goes back to blue and he sort of shrinks back into himself. Seeing that Tuck was going to ask what did you just feel, my boy? Well, I... Anger? I, pride? I, I, I thought that it was going to be a lot more reading and working to learn how to do magic. But I, I, I guess I feel a little happy that I, 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 I can do it. I, I feel a little happy I, I did something. Kid, you, uh, you did more than something today. You, you traveled where most people never go. You survived. You came out different, but much, much stronger, much more than you were before. You were one of the bravest people I've ever seen. I work with a... You've seen who I work with. They're the only other people I've seen show such courage, and I'm proud of you. He's trying to sort of... Uh, he's trying to adopt how he talks to Kale and... Yeah, and, the, uh, the sort of fathering Yeah. Because that, that he's gotten some grasp on, and he's realizing... Yeah. Give me a persuasion check. Yeah, yeah, that seems that seems legit. Let's see how effective how effective his his inspiring speech is. Okay, persuasion is not one of my stats, but it, uh, my charisma's <laughs> right. He's not the most charismatic. It can go either way. Come on, that's a nineteen. All right. Uh, you kind of give this emboldening, slightly slightly positive speech. It's definitely change positive. You're kind of highlighting, like, yeah, you've changed. You're different. But that's a good thing. Like, you've, you've grown. You've done something different no one's ever... No one has done before. Or that I've never seen someone do before. And it's incredible. It's great. Uh, you see his color sort of change. And he's... It pulses from... It pulses into like a reddish hue for a moment, and then it 
goes a little yellowy, and then it settles down into this orangish kind of patches of different orange things. It looks like looks like leaves on the ground in, in autumn. Hmm. And he's got a more, where, bef- where, where when he pulsed red, he had kind of like an upright, his chest puffed out, he looked bigger and more in charge. Now he's got kind of that old man, that like old man style walk where it's assured and assured and confident, but not overconfident. He's just kind of, he's, he's kind of come to terms. It seems, it feels like instantly you can tell he's, he's a little more okay with what's happened. Seeing that Tucker's going to actually sticks. He stays that orangish, orangey color. Awesome. But seeing that Tucker wants to try something quickly. He, he has his own cantrips, but he, uh, he knows of other druidic cantrips. He just never really adopted them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, so, you know what? He'll stick to his he, own. Cantrips. He knows the ones he knows. Um, he might have seen other ones happen, but he doesn't know how to do them. Yeah. So you know what? He's going to try and teach. Uh, he's going to try and teach Steppenstein frostbite. He's going to try and show him the the gestures to cast frostbite. Okay. Uh, see, he's gonna see if this is actually if it's pushed the if it's pushed up in Stein to the point where he's actually ready to learn magics. Um, go ahead and make God. So you're gonna show him. Are you gonna actually cast it, or are you just gonna show him the different components of it, the different pieces and parts? It's vocation. Yeah, he's going to explain. I'm not. I want to. Sh- I want to see something here. I want to see you something here, kid. And he's going to he's going to say the word, and he's going to do the gesture with his hand since you know cantrips are are all they're all vocational and and somat or they're all somatic and uh, verb and verbal, verbal right? I believe so. Okay. So I don't think any have a component. Some yeah. So and he's going to say the he's going to tell him the word and he's going to show him the gesture, but not do them together because that's sort of the trigger. Mm-hmm. And he's going to say, "Do you feel?" The energy within you now? Uh, he, it takes a couple tries, but he kind of, he emulates sort of the physical gestures you're doing, and through his, and as he's doing it, like, there's a, you can see sort of little shivers of blue run through as it doesn't work, as it doesn't work, doesn't work. And then, you get this little, you get this little sort of slide of yellow, slide of like greenish that flies that flies past for just a moment then he does it again and it goes green again and it does it again and he's he's clearly sort of getting something he can he he turns and he says i i I can i can feel it there's there's something there's something in here and he points to his chest that's moving we'll work towards it you're doing well uh he he begins to sort of he, he's getting excited. He's doing other things. He's copying other motions he's seen you do. He's copying motions he's seen other people do. And then he steps... He takes a step and... There's like a quizzical look on his face. And he, he just... He stops for a moment. He takes another step. And he's, he's got that same weird look. He, he kind of lifts his foot. And then he disappears. And he reappears 30 feet. Thirty feet away, stepping out ah, of the tree. Ah, his he's uh, he's got that Eladrin ability, huh? He's figured out how to do a quick little teleport. Tucker's going to go, but he looks exhausted. Yeah, and when Tuck, when he does that, Tucker's going to swear in giant or in Goliath. <laughs> it's like, oh, well, it would uh, holy it, mountains of molehills. Yeah, exactly. Doesn't translate oh. so well in English. Uh, or sorry, giant common. swears never do. Yeah. All right, so he's he's kind of got that he's got that going on. He's so he's excited. He's now he's going back and forth between that kind of greeny between that sort of like greeny hue and there's sort of like the reddish hue that shows up every once in a while. He's he's a he's a whole palette of colors mm-hmm. underneath his skin. All right. So, are, uh, at this point, are we back to where the meeting was happening, around the planning? Yeah, you, you've gotten back to where Kana is, and 
the Steffenstein boy, he says, can, I'm a little, I'm a little frightened to go home, but I'm, I'm, I think, I think you're right, Mr. Tucker. I think this is a good thing. I, I'm, I'm going to go, I'm going to go talk to my, talk to my parents and let, show them what's happened. And if they're not happy with it, well, blame it on me, kid. Bring, well, I, I, bring I them know, to me and I will explain what happened. He, he gives you a thankful look and he, he goes off. He's, he's going to go home and try to explain to his parents that he has turned into something different. Hmm. <laughs> that he has no idea what he is. Tucker, Tucker's putting on a brave face, but underneath, underneath he's just thinking, I've... I guess actually in his mind, he thinks he's just a druid now. Yeah. Like he thinks this is what a druid is. A druid changes colors and has, and can magically teleport and feels different. And Tim, it just he probably just thinks that for with Tucker, the uh, he's ma- managed to solidify the coloration or something. Yeah, Tucker's just going to think to himself. Because Tucker is I have uh, like everything else. Wait, sorry, you came through a little. What was that? Quiet there, me. Because Tucker was a human uh, originally, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Right. Actually. I like that. That makes yeah. perfect sense. Um, so Tucker is thinking, I've got... Oh, some... God. That makes even more sense because of your very change-focused speech to him. Like, you've changed into something better. Yeah. So Tucker's going to be thinking, I'm going to have some serious explaining to do later. But yeah, he's going to head oh. back. Hearing, having just... He'll shake his head and just realize, no, this is... This is going to be fine. If his parents can't accept it, then I guess it's just another... another kid to take under my wing it's gonna make him a dad a third time tucker's tucker's he's a father he's a father figure i like him tucker Good changes job, with tucker. the seasons he, he, cha- he changes like the seasons he's willing to adapt uh changes like the seasons yes yeah, very legend i know um but yeah so he's gonna head back and hopefully by now he's made it to where the gathering point was and Maybe old Gene has seen a change in the in the head of the of the abomination. So who knows? So uh, you've made it back. You're back to where the head was. Uh, Kana and them are Kana. And the, Kana has returned and was a little pissed because nobody was watching the head other than old Gene. Mm-hmm. He saw you guys leaving and came and watched it like a good responsible fellow. But I was dealing with the with the yeah, basic you, kid. Tucker explains like, okay, it's, some stuff happened. We it, can't, I had to do something. Yeah, cause where were you? And and uh, Tucker will just say, should happened. And Cypress, Cypress is still in the field somewhere. What is she? What what is she doing right now? Is she leading people in a drinking song? Is she getting a game going? Is she trying to find? Is she trying to find people? Or is she just like? Doing I think something? at this point she she's kind of got gotten an gotten an affinity for like the more uh, for the more acrobatic games. Okay. So she's gotten like she's taught the she taught the people a version of a game that they played back at her monk place, which was basically just like increasingly dangerous acrobatic stunts. Mm. But now everyone's doing it while they're drunk. And it's fantastic. Yes, and, <laughs> and Cypress thinks this is the best idea. Like, the, the start of the game is you're supposed to make a five-person human pyramid with everyone standing up, like, standing on shoulders. Mm-hmm. No one can make it past the three-person base layer. Like, just getting the three people to stand next to each other, they're having trouble. And everyone's loving it. <laughs> she's, like, she's climbing up, like, all right, I got this. Oh, no! <laughs> Tipping over. But she saves herself because she's she's that. Everyone can see this, and they just kind of let her go. They're like, oh, "She is, oh, she's having a great time. Let's let her. We'll we'll let her do this. We'll explain late. We'll explain tomorrow morning when we also explain what hangovers are." Uh, so here's where here's where we're gonna get into kind of the roots that we can take to Far Eldrith. So I have the little map we've got here. Uh, so before we do that, though, right? Um, yeah. Has the head changed at all since oh, Tucker's? I forgot. Yes, it has. It's still 
scaly and it's still like it's still shaped like a like the Naga's head was. That has not changed at all. But now both eyes are the lantern pupil shape. Hmm. It's changed from having the snake and pu- snake and lantern to both lanterns, and it's getting smaller, very 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 slowly. But like you notice that the you notice that the wraps around it are looser. Okay. And. If anything, they should have only gotten tighter as it got bigger and expanded. Mm. But it's looser now. Uh, I assume you guys sort of... I assume you guys are going to retighten them, do stuff to it, and keep an eye on it as it continues to do whatever it's going to do. Do you guys want to make any guesses, any thoughts? Do you want to ask... Ask old Gene if he saw like when it changed, or yeah. if anyone did see when it changed. Yeah, I think so. Uh, yeah. So, Gene, Gene is surprised and confused when he says, or when you say it's it's different, it's changed. He asks, "What's different? How how has it changed? It looks the same as when you left with the boy." So Tucker's realizing this thing, the reality's almost changed, having split split off the Naga. Or at least, hmm. I feel like that would be his first thought. It's rewriting the memories, uh, that now where there was one being, there's now two, and so it's confusing the, it's <clears throat> confusing those who actually knew it initially as the abomination, and now it's just this this corrupted human and the Naga, which, um, which Tucker, I'm guessing, could surmise was... Is the little snake that's hanging out with Stevenstein now? That that's Tucker. Tucker can think that, yeah. Okay. Um, it's not truth. It's just what Tucker is guessing. It it would make sense. He he split off the small bit of snake that the small bit of snag, snaga, of <laughs> naga that remained from it, and then that snake appeared. Hmm. Um, so that's a that's a very reasonable conclusion to come to. Yeah. Uh. But he says, you point out like it's getting like it's getting smaller. We had it wrapped tightly. Old Gene sees and recognizes like, oh yeah, you're you're right. It's changing slowly. Something is happening to it. Uh, but he can't. He doesn't. He didn't see anything happening actively to it. Like he didn't see it shifting or moving or anything like that. Hmm. Simply, it's gotten a little different. So you're gonna have to. You're gonna have to have somebody keep an eye on it. Well, we're planning to take it with us to to Far Eldrith, so mm-hmm. um, I'm thinking at this point. Uh, all right. Also, Kana's probably gonna have been. Did did she give or did Tur and Kale have one of those uh, those magical parchments? The two way the two way parchments. Yeah, Kana has the only one of those. Okay, so even if they. Yeah, Kale probably, uh, since Kale, oh yeah, because she took Although, it out, she took it out far. Other people have them, like there are more of them. Right. Jarell has his three set up with somebody. Yeah, exactly, but the problem was that Kana took it because they thought they were going to be gone the longest, but because of their trip through the Feywild, they came back a lot, mm-hmm. or they, their trip was cut a lot shorter. Um, so she's just trying to think about how they can get in touch with Kale, because before they make a, another excursion, she's hoping to reunite the party, much to her chagrin, yeah. about having to get Tur back, too. Well, Baron... Uh, Baron also has contacts. Like he has people he can contact and say, if you, if you see this person, send them this way. Send them here. She might, if Baron relays this to her, she might actually ask for him to do that. Okay. Uh, do you want to ask for just Kale, Kale, and Tur? How do you How do you want the message to go out? She'll say She'll say to them, if you could, please, uh, please see if your contacts have seen Kale, and I guess Tur, if if they've seen the. Arakakra. What message do they do you want to send them? Like, what message do you want people to tell Kale or Tur? She wants to, them to ask for an update, whether they're coming home or not. Are you coming home? And what happened? Like, that would yeah. be the written message? Well, I think that for the sake of brevity, she might just say, are you coming home? And then would it probably get a full status report uh, get a full stats report when they got back. Okay. 
but you guys are going somewhere else. Well, she wants to. She's hoping that they'll respond before they set out. Because if she can have the party reunite, then. Okay. Uh, so. So you're sending out a message. Are you coming home? Are we're like we're here right now? Do you want to say we're going some? We're going to this other place in on this day. You could have a specific departure date. Do you yeah. want to just wait? Do you want to like wait some time at Forestone to see if they arrive? I think so. I think they kind of would want to wait because also it, right now it seems like they should just keep an eye on the head, but just monitor it. If it gets, if it seems like it's growing in power again, then she'd say they need to get on the road. But okay, until until such time that it becomes an issue, she thinks it's better for them to actually wait and regroup, rest, get re resupplied. Make sure that they're fully ready for the trip, and hopefully get the full party back together. All right. So, and what about me? How long do you think you? How long does the party want to wait? Cypress, you have like you can, you can chime in. Let us know if you're gonna if you think it's a good idea to wait a long time, short time. You know how long it's gonna be, roughly to get there. Which would be um, like. I- I think Cypress is currently like this. This staying here is great. This place is awesome. Okay, Cypress is all for hanging out. Okay, um, yeah, that sounds like a good plan. Out of out of character, I think that it's better. Like, we've we've agreed that it's probably a time to get the full party back together. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And also, it'd be cool. I me, I appreciate you taking over as Cypress, but I'm sure that you're looking forward to being Tur again, right? I'm always looking forward to being the annoying bird man that yeah. everyone hates. Out of game when, when I when I when you said we could use a wizard and then you were like, please no, not terror. I was so, I was so sad. Well, that, that was gonna be how I was gonna get terror back. Well, that's the thing. Okay, <laughs> here's the thing: is that that's the character. Me, I was like, oh, now they're gonna go look for terror. Do you think Kana would actually want to go looking for Tur? No. <laughs> exactly. I no. thought Takra was gonna bring up that they could use a spellcaster. Well, he, he did. might look for a turn. He did. Maybe. Well, he, I mean, Kana recognizes that as much as she she has a distaste for Tur at the moment, she recognizes that he's their best chance at a spellcaster, a decent spellcaster at the moment. Because as much as strong as Tucker is getting, he's still he's more for the the poly the uh, the beast side of being a druid rather than mm-hmm. the magical side. So as much knowledge as, as he he has, they need a researcher and. Tur is probably their best bet at that, because he's, whether he's lying or not, he has proclaimed how much, how storied he is, how much he is experienced in the world, and if he's, oh, if he's, he's mad experienced, he's got so much knowledge in his, and in her head, he's like 30 years old or something, right, in her head, if there's any truth to that, then he might at least be able to lead them in the right direction, if Far Eldrith ends up not being the best option. Mm-hmm. Well, I hope he listens to the message when the message gets to him. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that's that's the current plan, I think, is to stay put, monitor the uh, monitor the head, mm. make sure it doesn't go anywhere, make sure that it's not regenerating, keep the... And get, like, supplies ready, get the house in order, get all that stuff ready for the trip when you do leave. She might ask if the, if the Lady Green knows of any other cold iron implements that could be used to keep it secured. Like cold iron chain okay. or anything, as much as I'm sure the Lady Green is is a is finds that abhorrent, she understand she will once I mean, again hopefully understand the situation is dire. As a fey creature, that would be the most she would be the best person to find that sort of stuff. True. Um, before we go there, and you can change your mind on this, I do want to put forward the basically three different routes to get to Far Eldrith. There's one route, which is, there's a, there's a main road that you're going to go on for all of them. And it goes down most of the way, and then it splits off into a small side road leading to a, uh, leading to a big sort of obelisk out in the grasslands. And from there, there's sort of a northern entrance into the, king, into the country. You can also head further down on that road, and there's a western entrance in. And then you can go really far down, swing around bottom on the main tra- on the big sort of old royal road, and go in a southern entrance. If you were if you were going to go to to see Cypress's 
monastery, like to go through that, you would go through the northern entrance. If you want to avoid it entirely, you would go through the southern entrance. And if you want to go through sort of the most, sort of the port town, it's kind of weird to say port, but like the the contact point, the main yeah. sort of trade town, that would be the western entrance. And of course, northern entrance is the shortest, western second shortest, southern longest, but the southern one also would get you to like the main city fastest. I think uh, Kana would defer to Cyprus on that one because, once again, Cyprus is the, it knows Far Eldrith better than she does. Um, probably whichever is fastest based on the... Uh, does Cyprus want to just get to Far Eldrith or does she want to go to, like, the... Does she think they should go to the, the Order of the Lantern's, like, home base? Both, um, both would work. You could contact base, people. Considering that they seem to have a better idea of what to do. Okay. So that's going to be the southern route. So that's going to be the longest longest journey to get into the kingdom, but then you're basically there already for the main part. And it's really slow going in this mountainous forested kingdom. Hmm. Uh, and you guys can change your mind on that. At any point, like there, you're gonna have, you're gonna pass both breakpoints to go into the other entrances. So that's that's easy enough. Uh, now you've got some waiting time. Uh, Baron Baron is gonna send out his like messages to his contacts saying, "Look out for these people. Look out for these these two adventurers. If you find them, tell them, are you coming home?" Or kind of says, "Are you coming home?" and try and convince them to come back to Forest Home. He adds that part on his own, because he thinks we can use all the people we can get. Mm. But uh, Connor doesn't know he's trying to urge them back. He's just sending the message she's, she asked for in, that, in his mind. And it's time to wait for a while. What, are you guys, what do you guys want to do for sort of this downtime period? We're going to be waiting a while to hear when people, when they respond. Kana is going to well, see... Oh, sorry. Or if they respond, even. You, you want to go first, Chris? Uh, no, uh, you, you, you go ahead, Bill. You go ahead. Uh, day one, um, she's going to learn what a hangover is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's got to oh. suck. Uh, make me a nice, make me a nice constitution saving throw. Let's see how bad it is. How well do those pies stay down? Seventeen. I mean, the one, the stuff that's Seventeen. Oh, nice. All right. Not too bad. You've got a you've got a hammering headache. Light hurts, and everything feels sore and unhappy. You realize you did fall down several times during that ac- acrobatic game, and you ne- you didn't quite actually manage to save yourself each time. But you're mostly fine. You can you can function that first hey, uh, that first day and morning. One other thing I wanted to bring up regarding that, because one, it's flavorful, and two, I feel like mm-hmm. it's kind of a nice thing. I when I created Cyprus, we, they hadn't released the uh, the new sub or the new uh, monk paths. Yeah. Would we want to consider having her shift over from being a open fist character to being a drunken master? I would leave that up to me. So it's your call then. Because that would actually that might okay. Um, you know what? I kind of like the idea that she's she's gotten her first taste of alcohol. She finds that it's actually it's kind of invigorating. Just the remembering how she felt during it. She might actually consider shifting over to drunken master versus being of the way of the open fist. Okay. I feel like that's also fun for a wood elf since elves are usually considered to be sort of the straight laced. I mean, she is definitely not straight laced. Ah, oh, you become proficient in performance. Nice. You know what? I think we should do it. I feel like that might be a fun character development for uh, for Cyprus. All right. So she can she rebuilds up as a as a drunken master. Mm. Good stuff. Yes, I will. I will make the changes when I have the time. All right. Um, 
So that can be that can definitely be part of her. If you if you want me, her part of her downtime can be going around to the taverns and like learning the, learning the different kinds of drinks and learning learning how from from like a bartenders and from uh, from different people in town how to brew a little bit. Maybe she's maybe she's gonna start trying to pick up how to make her own beer, make her own whiskey or something. Does that sound like something okay. you'd be up for, or do you want to do something different with her time? No, I think that she'd be up for that. All right. Uh, people are glad to teach you. You always you always bring more people into the tavern whenever you come around. Whenever you come around, so everyone's psyched to have you in. And the people who come in are psyched because you always have the best games. And everyone gets everyone gets to have a good time. Uh, so what is Kana gonna do with her with her time as we're waiting to hear back from people? Um, so I think that Kana will actually want to take the time to see if she can make a stronger bow. Uh, maybe even one that has a little bit of magic to it, considering that it's made from uh, that the string will be made from fey material. Okay, so you're gonna see if you can you're gonna see if you can find a way to use that use mm-hmm. that string. Yes, uh, and along with that, she would probably see. Considering that Tucker's probably got a little bit of downtime, she might see if he could do something about finding some magical some wood with some more magical properties to it, or might be more conducive to magical properties, or maybe speak with Lady Green about that. Um, I mean, you've got, you've got time to do all these things. Which do you, what do you want to focus on? What do you want to be your primary thing? If Talking to Lady Green about, and she can help you look for cold iron stuff, look for this sort of more, ma- more magical wood that might help repair the staff. She, you could focus on the bow, working on that, trying different things to see what works. I think she would first... I have a quick question for you. Yeah. Um, what is a brewer's supplies? Would it be wisdom to like try and um, like? Cause... I don't know, because I've heard I've heard two different things on brewing beer and stuff. I've both heard that it's very much it's like super hardcore into the cooking. In, you know how they say like cooking is more art than science. Baking and yeah. brewing is way more science than art. Like, it's far more exact stuff. But then I've also heard with making wine and making and fermenting uh, alcohol and stuff, that's a lot more of a art, kind of like a do it by feel, try stuff out, see if it works. I think we could call it wisdom. Okay, cool. But it would have to be like a, it would have to be fermented alcohol and stuff, or like a liquors and things rather than beer or wine, which has no Trust mechanical me. impact. I, I don't think she cares. <laughs> There's also one more flavorful thing I realized is that Cypress by nature is not a charismatic person. She's actually got a negative one modifier to it. Mm-hmm. So she likes it, the, but she saw how, no, she saw how well uh, people responded to her when she was drunk, so I think she likes the fact that she becomes a much more social per- sociable person when she's drunk. Uh, yeah, that that I mean that makes sense. This is the that's the common college path. <laughs> but she's not a bard. Uh, might as well be. Ah, uh, true. Oh well, yeah. Okay. So fermentation. Uh, yeah, fermentation brewer stuff. That's. Definitely something we need yeah. to pursue for her now. Maybe she'll find that she enjoys Elvish wine more than more than ale, but we'll we'll let her grow into that. Too bad Cornish is gone. He was the best brewer in town. Oh, Cornish. We found his remains, didn't we? Oh. Yeah. Well, we found some of his remains. Mm. Most uh, of it had been absorbed into the structure. Yeah. So what? Which one is which one is Kana gonna focus on? Uh, uh, Kana, the bow or the Mistress Green stuff? I think that she, okay, yeah, if she wants to pursue this, I think she would want, first want to work on the actual shaft of the bow to see if she can actually find a material that would make for a stronger weapon than, than her short bow. She's going to try and make a long bow. 
I think do rogues have prof- proficiency in, in that, or is it only in short bows? I believe it's short bows. Uh, let's see. Here. Let's nope, she's check. also she's also prof- uh, proficient in long bows. Oh, nice. Yeah. All right. I also forgot that I made that she can speak infernal. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so she's proficient in longbows, so I think she would be, she would be hoping to fashion a longbow. So she's got three parts of this she wants to implement. Yes. Firstly, she wants to talk to Lady Green about finding the right material for the actual bow. Okay. Secondly, she wants to talk to Jarrell about fa- how to properly fashion a longbow. Okay. Or at least, um, or maybe just have him fashion it for her once she's gathered the materials. Mm-hmm. And then thirdly, she want to go through the process of learning how to properly, because I'm guessing practice using yeah. it and stuff like that. Especially if it's a magic bow, she would probably need to attune herself to it, right? Or I guess it does. It depends on how magic it is. Yeah. So. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh. How much money does? How much money do you have at the moment? Kana has all the team's funds except for you know materials to sell back. So she's got mm-hmm. three hundred forty nine on her, plus three grimy rings and three black vials and one blue vial and a glimmer stone. Oh, nice. Uh, also, an unidentified spell scroll. Do you want so? When you so uh, to find if you want to find like this nicer some sort of nicer wood. You can go to Lady. You can go to Mr. Screen, or you can go to Jarrell. They both would be able to help you find good wood. They probably aren't going to be able to find you any magical wood because we're not in a super magical wooded area. Mm. Uh, who do you want to go to? I think probably Jarrell. Unless Lady Green was to generate the material herself, it would probably be better to go to Jarrell since he actually knows the woods. Okay. Uh, he can absolutely, he'll, he'll find you free of charge, a nice, like a nice chunk of yew or something, elm, some very nice sturdy wood, possibly a couple different pieces. And he, he is not a bowyer himself, but he knows, he knows who to go to in town. And he, he says, I'll gladly take this, I'll gladly take you over and show it to you, show it to them. When you get to the bowyer, they actually suggest for a longbow, they think that perhaps a metallic core might be, might give you some extra oomph. Okay. And if you do that, you're going to have to pay a little extra to get, to get it. Or you could, you, you could try using that glitter stone you had, you could show it to them, could you use this? Yeah. You know, I, I think I'll do that. Um, well... Because was the okay? It w- depends on whether or not she recognized that the glitter stone was an ore rather than a, uh, rather than just a stone. I mean, she doesn't. She doesn't know what it is. Okay. She's, she can show it to the person. And be like, yeah. can you? This is something I found. Can you use this? I think she'd ask. She might. How about we had it that she actually went to get the glitter stone appraised to see, you know, to find out what it was. Like she tried to take it to a merchant and they said, oh, it's this or that. Oh, they have no idea what it is. Oh, shit. They've okay. never seen anything like that. Then I guess she will go back. They're like, we, it's not a jewel. Is it? We a, think. Okay. So she'll, yeah, she'll go to the guy then and she'll say, could you use this? Uh, he, they like try, they try and, they try and heat it up. They try and work it. They do think, they beat on it, mess with it. And it does change shape. It does become this sort of more malleable thing. But rather than turning into like a turning into like a rod, being able to shape it into that, it turns more flexible <laughs> into something into something they that you could like put as a cover over the wood. <laughs> like a it turns from like the solid rock to like this thin, sparkling, blackened blackened uh, starlight sort of sheath. Okay. Wow. Uh, so that's that. Uh, it. They ask for. They ask for some money. They ask for about a hundred gold pieces for time and labor spent working on the. Okay. Working on the metal. They also ask if you ever find anything like that again, please bring it to us and no one else. Okay. That is an incredible, strange material. Okay. Uh. Um, that sounds... Kana will agree, but she'll ask if they're looking for exclusivity in, uh, in the material. Maybe she can get a discount next time. She's a haggler. 
she she's a she's the daughter of a successful businesswoman. She learned she learned a little bit about, you know, if you're looking for if you're looking for exclusive rights, then maybe we should cut a deal for for my end too. I won't ask for like free stuff from you, but maybe we can knock off 10%. She's trying to be reasonable too cuz they've been good to her. Mm -hmm. So she's saying 10% maybe I 10% off. Will it will will give you we'll we'll certainly we'll certainly consider something when you, if you bring us any more. Brilliant. Uh, okay. Well, um thank you. Uh and she so she's got this sheet now that she could actually fold over a bow. That well, they like they folded it over onto the onto the bow. Oh. Like they they have it, they've stapled it in, they've attached it. It merged it merged along the back even actually, so it's it's immobile on it. Dang. Like the, the material merged onto itself. And they still have there still is like a small bit left. Okay. Uh, so you've used a hundred gold and your glitter stone to make a new longbow. Two hundred forty nine plus uh, and as the Piece, the, I wish I knew how to do a French accent, but le piece, piece de, de resistance. Yeah, the piece de resistance. She's going to take out some of that that uh, face silk and use that for the for the bowstring. All right. Uh, Kana's getting an upgrade. Kana's getting an upgrade. She kind of needs it a little bit, at least for the archery aspect. She's been good in that that cold iron dagger you let her have is incredible, but. For, uh, for the archery aspect, she's been kind of stuck at short bow for a while. How much of the of the flexible glitter stone material is left? There is a very small amount, enough to possibly work it into like a small. What is what is the thing I'm thinking of? Have you ever seen like the wire like the wire wire necklaces sort of things where like they take wire they wrap it around a stone or something? Yeah, yeah. There's enough to make something like that. To like hold a thing, hold a piece in something, maybe enough to make it into like a ring or something like that. Hmm. But it would be pretty thin. Definitely not enough to do anything other than maybe like inlay some on a handle of a weapon or something like that. Well, I guess it comes down to what the properties of that glimmer stone are. So I think now that now that she's got the bow set up, she's going to spend the next part of their of their time resting to try and analyze exactly how uh, how the her new bow works i'm gonna put that actually on her sheet long she's gonna you know what she'll also sell back her short bow because now that she's got this bow she's feeling like the short bow is not is just cumber is just a uh, cumbersome now uh the, the bow ears appreciate the idea but they're like we have lots of bows oh no she'd sell it to or you know she'll she'll just take it back to the lodge she'll just keep it Keep it there yeah, as a keep, backup item. Yeah, just in case the this longbow doesn't work out. All right. So, when she's testing it, what what should I do for that? So, uh, wait. Let me look at this. Just want to see here. Oh right, you have your identifying effects. It doesn't require attunement, so that's not gonna matter. Okay, so basically, the the way I've changed up the whoop, that's not the one. The way I've changed up magic items identifying is if you use the identify spell, you you know what the item does. You know how to make it. You know how to make it do things that it does. So if it has spells it can cast or anything, you can just you know how to do them. You know the words to say, and you know how you know if it needs to be attuned or anything. You can also do the short rest, like the hold on to it during a rest, and it will tell you what it does. You have to hold it the whole time. Mm -hmm. So if there's a curse on it or if there's something bad to it, it's going to affect you. I thought you also had to play with it during that time. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta, you like experiment with it. You do various different things. You see what, you're literally like trying it out for a short rest. And... If it, ha if it requires attunement, you have to attune to it to understand it during this process. And then, if you just hold it, you're not going to learn anything about it. Well, she's going to so be you testing gotta, it. you got to try and test it and do stuff. Yeah, she's going to be testing it out for sure. So, you kind of get, get the feel that this is, like, it's become a lot more tough and durable. It's... You're so confident in this, in fact, that at one point during your testing, you literally put it in a fire. 
and it doesn't burn at all. Mm. So acid and fire do not have any effect on the bow, whereas like a normal bow might catch fire during when you get hit by a fireball, or might get melted if you get hit by an acid splash. This ain't gonna have anything happen. Okay. It doesn't do any extra damage on a normal attack, but on a crit, you do roll an extra damage die. Like wow. you notice when you get that nice precision shot, there's just a little something extra. Okay. And when it's unstrung, you can use it as a quarter as a quarter staff. Ah. She, well, she's not proficient in that, but still, that's awesome. Um, so cool. The glitter stone bow, I like it. Um, well, thank you. Uh, so that's what Kana does, and, and that's gonna take a while. Like it takes them a while to figure out how to use it. You check them out. Like, you hang out at the bow ear for time. Right. You're working on, like, how many pieces of this, how many pieces of the stuff do I need to use? How little? Uh, all that sort of, all that sort of fun stuff. Okay. It's mostly a normal bow. All right. It's just got that little extra stuff of being indes of mostly indestructible and all that. So it's a one, but it's got, yeah, it's got the normal 1d8. Mm -hmm. right. Um... Takra, I'm going to assume, he's going to chill and teach and work with the boy more. Try to teach him some of his spells, try to show him more lore about the world and that sort of stuff. Um, Unfortunately, heavy isn't an issue for Kana. I was just looking up. Mm -hmm. so oh yeah, and it's lighter. It's half the weight of a standard bow. Oh, nice. Which makes no sense because there's yeah, extra yeah. material on it. But yeah. that's how we're doing it. <laughs> this thing defies the laws of physics! <laughs> I like it. Um, so let's see. So she's... Cypress is learning how to brew. Kana's making her bow. Tucker's teaching the boy how to do magic. Yeah. He's, and all, all sorts of other stuff. Can, does Tucker have records of... of uh, since his master was, was uh, in the way of the sun, not the way of the moon. Mm -hmm. Also, what are the other... Are there other paths for... Yeah, there's a bunch of paths. Okay, uh, shoot, I... No, wait, I have Xanathar's guide. Um, I guess he, he's trying to he's make... He's not gonna... He won't be deciding what circle he goes in Okay, good. First, that's what I was that's concerned a level about. two thing. Right. He's not even really level one yet. Yeah, he, he's like kind of level one. Yeah, but I just want to make sure that Tucker wasn't fully influencing what he became, because mm -hmm. to each druid their own, right? Yeah, I mean, it's... A big part of the circles is who is training you, but it's also what element of nature speaks to you the most. Right. And, like, I, I have an idea of what sort of thing he probably would be going for, but it's not necessarily going to be that. Right. Because when whenever you come back, you might be able, like, Tucker might be able to lead him in a certain direction or not. If he wants to, if not, yeah. he might. He'll let them, he'll let him do what he does. I and think, we'll see where the character goes. Yeah, I think Tucker is gonna he's gonna change because he's changed. Right, but I think in going along with that, I agree because I feel like with Tucker, he his master did not try and force anything on him. He understood that, or his master's way was to let nature guide, have as equal uh, an equal amount of guiding Tucker for as a druid as you know him teaching Tucker. You know. Personally, so I think Tucker's gonna do his best to make sure that Steppenstein is is given the chance to find to let nature guide him down his own path. As much as Tucker can teach him the basics and hopefully guide mm -hmm. him in the right direction, nature will nature will pull Steppenstein in the direction in whatever he needs to way follow. it goes. Yeah. All right. So that's Tucker's time. That's he's gonna do that. He's gonna be training him, doing all sorts of stuff. There was one other thing I was hoping to do with Tucker. Yeah. Uh, since he's the most magically attuned, I think Kana would leave the spell scroll, the black vials, the blue vial, and the grimy rings that she got from mm -hmm. one of their adventures. Did she leave them with him? Since he's got the most attunement to magic and probably has the best chance of figuring out what they do. Okay. Especially if he's spending his time just watching the boy work. Uh, so. Are you gonna try and do? Are you gonna try and like do this sort of experimentation with the rings to see what they do? Yes. Well, they he's do. gonna spend a day cleaning yeah. them first. They do nothing. They're rings. Okay. They're just money. Got it. Um, he well actually once he's polished them up, then he'll give them back to Kana and tell her exactly that she'll mm -hmm. probably go and sell them. Yeah. 
So that'll be another, that'll be like 50 gold back. Okay. Uh, Get rid of those potions. Rings. What did I... You said there were three blue and the one oh, no. black? No, three black, one blue. Three black, one blue, okay. Uh, and also the spell scroll. And the spell scroll. The spell scroll is a different kind of magic. It's divine magic. Oh, did we already... We did discuss that. Yeah. I'm sorry. I forgot. We just... Nobody can use it. Right. Uh, if I remember, I think it's Guiding Bolt. Okay. Is, I think, what it was. Okay, but we wouldn't know that. That's yeah. that's that's out of character. But you can... He knows, like, oh, this is not my kind of magic. Yeah. This is something he would have to go to... Actually, it's a good thing we're going to a holy order, then. They might be able to help. Absolutely. Once again, out of game. Um, and for the potions... Hmm... Yeah, we'll go by it. We'll, we'll go with the sip test. That's fine. So uh, the three black potions are oils of quickness, mm. which basically give you, well, you, for uh, an hour after you drink them, you have advantage on initiative, and you get to, for any, for any finesse weapons, you get to add plus one to their damage. Tucker's going to give those back to Kana. And the blue potion is... um. What did I what did I call it? Sorry, you said it was oils of quickness? Yes. That one oh, is a lightning essence potion. Hmm. Uh when you take it, you are able to maximize the damage dice of the next lightning of the next next lightning damage spell you cast. Okay, Tucker might hold on to that because he's now aware that he can he can cast lightning magic outdoors. Yeah. Which in his mind he's just like, oh my. God, this thing smells like ozone. Yeah. It's going to make stuff pa pack a punch. Yeah, I like it. All right. Um, um, let's so, see. Nice to so have we've that. So we got some time passing. It's not... It's It's been a while. Kale is out there. Kale actually responds on the quicker side. Somebody was in the camp... Somebody's in the camp where Kale is currently. Mm -hmm. Or was currently and finds him pretty quickly. Kale, uh, Kale's been there this whole time. He's been, and should we state that he's been trying to figure out how to get into the dungeon, but he can't? Yeah, it's, they've been trying, they've been dealing with trying to figure it out because the portal is at the bottom of the lake. Yeah. Oh, additionally. Like they, they figured out stuff is coming out. He's been dealing with it, moving along, coming along. Okay. But nobody knows, nobody has a solution for the whole water breathing issue. Okay. Um, in addition... Was he able to do anything with the bundles of owlbear feathers and the 21 owlbear talents? Uh, you can sell them if you want, or you can save them and see if there's something to do back here at home. Okay. Yeah, he would have gone to see what exactly he could, yeah. could be done with them. Plus, um, he wanted to ask about the bronze figurehead while he was there. Yeah. That, the bronze figurehead was, well, we'll, we'll cover that when we do what he does. Got it. We'll have like a separate session for that. Okay, okay. Um, and Tur takes a while longer. It's probably been about two weeks or so. Um, I don't, I, I actually don't quite remember. So last time we had Tur, he had gotten the book. Was he going to stick around in Haldeheim, in that town, or was he going to, or was he leaving? I think he looted all he could from. He took um, he, unless he yeah he took pretty much everything he could get his hands on from the down bottom place. Yeah. So what direction oh, was I, he I heading? A, I had a quick question before we uh, departed. Yeah. Could I try and get another chunk of the uh, first pedestal? Oh. You can, you definitely could try. Uh, it will be tougher to get in, and it will be tougher to take things because he opened the he opened the thing publicly, and within like within a day or so, people are gonna the people would begin to start going down and investigating, and similar to how before it would be. Like you could have taken a piece from up from up from up in the upstairs area, but they have it recorded and they would know it's missing. 
you could try to you could try and sneak in and take a piece, but they would know it's missing pretty quickly, and start looking around for people who were down there. Do you want to give it a shot? Um, give me a moment. Let me take a look to see what I am capable of. Well, I don't have anyone else helping me, correct? Correct. You sent Bos- You sent Boscow or Boscov and what was that? The the halfling that I was playing. Jonah. Maybe. Maybe. Jasper. Jasper. That was it. You sent uh, Boscov and Jasper off with with your first piece of that thing over to Forest Home, and they never arrived there. Oh. I'm guessing that the powers that be weren't so happy about the unauthorized excavation. Oh, no, it's entirely unrelated. Oh, okay. I like Jasper. He's a little... He wasn't able to handle Tur that well, but then again, nobody's been able to handle Tur except for Kale. Yeah. He's, Tur's only able to handle... I mean, Kale's Tur. only able to handle Tur because... Kale believes that Tur, Tur believes that Kale is the superhero. Yeah, Kale only handles Tur because Tur allows himself to be handled. Yeah, that is true. So, um, so what do you so think? I think? I think he's done for now. Okay. He'll make note that there is still more stuff there. Mm-hmm. But uh, he'll need to he'll, he'll need to uh, deal with it later. So, what direction is he gonna head out in? I know he was interested in going to, uh, interested in going to the, the Wild Marsh way off in the northwest. Yeah, um, is that in the direction of, uh, Kale? Yeah, you would, you, you could, like, hit Kale on the way there, or you could bypass Kale and go straight there. I think you would probably check on Kale. Okay. Um, Needs to check to make sure his hero's not screwing everything up. Huh. So that's that long. It's been that long. So it's probably what... It probably was about... two weeks-ish after... after Kale got there that Tur would get there. So Tur would go check on Kale, Yes. And he would make sure yeah. Kale's doing heroic things and being heroic. And I assume he would start the, uh, this would be a prime place to start the fan club. Yeah. there's lots of materials for that. Well, in that case, definitely. Oh, perfect. That means I can do, that means I can do the, we can do Tur and Kale together. And Tur and Kale can find out about the fan club in the, in the next, in the next session. That's great. All right. So. Okay. So that's hap- So that's happening there. We got some time. And would Tur leave Kale alone, or would Tur stick with Kale if Kale was being stubborn and didn't want to leave until he'd finished heroing? I think uh, he would help. Tur would help uh, Kale with his hero her- heroing. Okay. So you guys both get the message at around the same time. Kale gets the message of "Are you coming home?" asking, finding, f- asking for help in Forest Home. And we'll see if we can. We'll see if we have resolved the issue of the portal before you guys go home, or if the portal is still open when you mm-hmm. guys, when you guys get the message next time. All right. Oh. Well, Riley, thank you as always for all the organization. I know it's a it's a lot of work, so thank you very much. Oh. But it is fun, man. You've created an awesome world, and it's always fun to be, take part in it. I'm just happy I've faintly kept a timeline <laughs> organized by fudging everything. Yeah. Well, that's tricky. It's amazing how well that works, right? Oh, it's, it's just gorgeous. Yeah. You just say, the time works, and it does. Yeah. Well, everyone, thank you very much for joining us for episode 17. Uh, we're glad to be back. I know it's been, the summer was a bit of a hiatus for us, but it, you know, busy lives so yeah we're going to hopefully keep this a bit more consistent now we've got, mm-hmm. we got a bit more time now that we're getting to fall and thank you all and we will see you for the next one have a good night y'all